with spring break upon us, you already know you got to keep them boys fresh and clean because it's hot outside. You better believe that. Dang, I was I was enjoying being a savage, but you know now you gotta step your game up, my dude. Listen, for years I was always keeping the shaft clean, but the balls heavy. But now everything gotta go, and with this Manscaped promo code and Manscaped product. I'm going to be good for South Beach. I'm going to be good for Mexico. I'm going to be good for Seattle. We got the Manscaped 5.0 Ultra Lawn Mower. Because you know my fellas don't be, you know what I'm saying, keeping yourself groomed. Manscaped.com. Put the promo code bag fuel in there. Because you want to be right before you get on the airplane, not after. And you're going to get 20% off. Believe that. It's Woo. on me. Bag fuel. Bag fuel, baby. Oh, man, bag fuel. This is going to be a good um, clickbait episode, man. I, I know y'all been waiting for this. And we got the perfect person. Wow. Hey, he started off real quick. What cool. the fuck? <laughs> That's not how I came into this. Oh, I, I just want I fuck with y'all. Yo, Jesus Christ. Yeah, he came in crazy. <laughs> It's Rory. I'm trying to enjoy my tea and shit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, no. you living healthy, man. Holy Whoa. shit. Whoa. He's I didn't know that's how he was coming out the gate. Absolutely. Yes. I'm back, too. I'm, 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 I'm here today, too. Okay? <laughs> he's still on clickbait. Oh, so it's crazy. Yeah, because, you know, um, in this space of the content world right now, the mm. audience is becoming evolved quicker than the people that's creating the content. And there's something... Yeah. There's something you said that was very profound and people didn't understand. It's like, there's no more people to interview. Enough is enough. Yeah, like it's a battle to who could talk to someone else quicker. That's it. Which is fine. I think interviews are important in this space, but it's just become a race to who could speak to that person quicker than the other person. Mm. There's not really much journalism involved in it, which is fine. Like, I don't think podcasting should necessarily be journalistic. completely journalistic. I think we should, like, that's why I think Rap Radar is important for when they want to fully, fully come back. We need people that actually do journalistic shit, but podcasters just pretending to be journalists to actually get the chance to speak to people that need to be speaking to journalists is where I think things are all fucked up. Like, we should speak amongst each other because mm -hmm. we're podcasters. <laughs> and if people want to get the chance to try to do some journalistic shit, cool, but it's going to fall flat in the long run, in my opinion. But what do you say? I, I actually agree with that, right? It's, but, it's an opinion that could be torn apart in the comments, but I just really feel that certain people should only be spoken to if it's coming from a journalistic perspective. No, I'm not, I'm not mad at that, but in the, in the space that we in, right? These people that are going to watch you for views, because everybody has a different financial... Absolutely. Uh, uh, they make their money differently, right? Mm -hmm. So us, we make our money, we, you kill what you eat. So you making your money off of YouTube, you're doing consultations, you hosting, yeah. you're doing online promo for people. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what we're doing. Then you might have a situation like Joe might have with investors, I don't know what it is, or he has his own money. Then you might have a situation where you have a deal with somebody and they get in, and you, and you got to deal with somebody and they help to market and promo your shit. So everybody's shit kind of different. Right, so I feel like that until the money gets found or balanced out, then people can play their position because they're using the mm -hmm. artists and the famous people to just get hits. To me, unless you're willing to do straight clickbait, straight I'm going at somebody, I'm talking crazy, blah, blah, blah. Well, I mean, I guess maybe, maybe I'm too hard on the podcasters in that opinion because I think it does fall on the label as well. Podcasters have allowed ours. I was speaking outside of the music industry. I okay. mean, everyone should speak to whoever mm -hmm. I feel in the music industry because it's entertainment. But you're losing the, the real journalistic integrity when it comes to musicians. Same way we're losing it with music, we're losing it on this side with media. Mm -hmm. which, is, which, who am I to fucking talk? Because I'm not on the journalistic side. That's okay. why we turned down a lot of interviews with artists. Like, I'm just not sure what I can really contribute to your rollout. Now, I think it's important for artists to look like humans and sit with people like us to like mm -hmm. really kick it and get to know them. But it is missing a huge factor, the way we do look into music of who they really are as people. I think that's missing within media. Do you think you're a 10 percenter because a lot of people now connect to the artists because of their story? 
more than the music. I think... Which, it shouldn't be that way, but that's what it's why? evolved in. I, I think, I, this is why I didn't want to be on Elliot's side, but I fucking am when it came to that Kai <laughs> shit. Do I think the streamers are important? I think Kai is one of my favorite... Absolutely. I don't know Kai personally, but he's one of my favorite people I don't know as far as media goes. I think mm -hmm. he's a genuine human being. I love his story. I love where he's from. I love what he's doing. I think he is a positive human being and doing the right steps. But there needs to be a balance where labels now can just put somebody with a streamer or put them with podcasters, us included, where they may not be challenged the exact same way they should be to the consumer for us to really get to know them. They can skip a lot of steps and just, you know, skip past the bullshit and now the labels can really dictate what this artist's image is and who they are as a person. Because there's no challenge. If they want to go dance in Kai's basement, I think that's fucking great. It's hilarious. But we also have some questions as consumers and as fans. That's where the, the disconnect is. Now labels are like, oh great, they don't have to answer real questions? Because that was always the thing back in the day. Like, yeah, watch what like, you... Even, like, even Angie, who is the GOAT, right? Angie, what Angie's talent to me was, she was able to ask real fucking questions, but she was able to make somebody feel like they were talking to their sister, like they were in a really co like comfortable environment. But then you had people like Star. Charlemagne, of course, has changed, but then you have people like Charlemagne. Like, you did have to hit that point of your press run where you have to answer some fucking questions that we need to know. You can't go scot-free with every action that you have as an entertainer. We just don't have that luxury. Now with the streamers, yeah, just go fucking dance with somebody. You'll get the clicks and but, move the fuck on. But it's, it's tricky because, you know, people love the controversy. You've had a, a legendary breakup just like us, and mm. that's always going to be something to be asked. No, we're the only people that have to have our feet to the fire. These artists can now just go dance with Kai and they and don't have to answer for it. shit. They don't got to do shit. Okay. If I want to go on a press run, I want to do anything. I have to talk to y'all and answer fucking real questions. Uh -huh. That Artists now don't have to do that, which is cool. I'm not saying artists have to live their life that way, but that is part of the media culture. You have to answer for some shit that's going on. But if, if you want to play all day to get clicks as an artist, you can't now skip when your fan base wants to ask you something. But they can't skip because you said because they're not being required to do it anymore. And I'm saying because that's the everybody problem. wants to be next to the artist, they want to be next to the sure. celebrity. So that's that's good enough for them instead of actually making a difference, making a mark. It's just yeah. all about I just want to get a relationship and say that I'm with this celebrity yeah. and I'm doing something big. I want to ask y'all two a question. As two guys who worked at record labels, what is the shift needed for these artists to really be viewed as great musicians, aside from talent. Do good music, because their music yeah. is that's trash. The, that's the short, I don't want to say music is trash. There's still great music out there. From where? You just have to find it. Yeah, but it's hard as fuck. So, so now mm. we, got, we, got a, See, I, we got the best of the, we, we're going to argue about this, because for me right <laughs> now, this is the best of the trash. Nobody's doing nothing stupendous, tremendous. Nobody's making a mark that you're going to say that I'm really feeling this person and I know their vibe. There are people that are putting a couple songs out that we like and All right, well, it's let me, cool. Let me give y'all a little pushback because I am, I am a little younger than y'all. Mm -hmm. Name the era where fucking amazing hip hop just fell from the fucking heavens at all times. Like Bullshit has always been on the radio. Bullshit has always been pushed forward. It's not... It's different. I, I feel y'all. I totally agree. But bullshit's been pushed to the forward, this but this isn't is, that much different. No, nah, this is all bullshit. It's way more bullshit. No, no, and it's I all like trash. the music. The artists, the, even the artists that are making it are saying the music is trash and we got to get back to better music. Let, let me, let the, me hear what, how you expand on that. All right, I'll put it this way. When, all right, I was born in 1990. So when I was 12, 13, I loved Nelly. Like, I love Nelly. Nelly mm -hmm. was it to me. I thought you were Nelly. Which Matter of fact, that when, makes sense. What before the Gina wave happened, when Rule went from his first album to, to Rule, Rule 336 three, and started like being more melodic, that was as a 12, 13 year old, that was my shit. Okay. That's how a, a young kid thinks. They like melodies. They like that's just how young brains work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All my older cousins, everyone in my neighborhood was like, yo, that Nelly shit is whack. That Ja Rule shit is whack. That shit is whack, whack, whack. Now those same people now are like, damn, I wish we could go back to the Rule and Nelly days. Mm. Now Nelly's looked at like, yo, that was like a golden era at that time. Yeah. But when that shit was coming out, we was like, I was like, damn, should I not listen to this? Like, see, see I was. I can't music. just listen. Like, the Infamous is one of my favorite albums, but I was 
I needed to grow he's, up with the music I was. <laughs> Like, <laughs> yeah. like, I love it, but yeah. I just, it's weird how we have revisionist history about a lot of the people we deem MCs now. When I was a kid, I used to get clowned for listening to that shit by people that were like, yo, that's not real hip hop. But like, real singing but was you know not what? real hip hop to people. But you know where I'm coming from, which is, which is yeah. a totally different aspect? I was there. Yeah. So I was in the business. When Nelly was doing a hundred grand a week, and, and I was we a consumer, a, so I'm yeah, speaking from the consumer. Yeah, so I'm speaking from yeah. being in the game and knowing what they, what we were doing to make music. Like I try, I try to tell people, it's not really fair because of this. They don't invest in the music. Mm. The power of making good music is the power of collaboration. So many records that people don't know. Everybody think Jay Z wrote everything by his. Nobody wrote everything by themselves. Of course not. Everybody collaborated. God, God I hope not. Like, like, but I never want to meet an artist that wrote everything. It, 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 that is, it doesn't I'm exist. Why not? Because music is supposed to be a collaborative thing. Like, there's no fucking reason you should write everything. You should not have multiple producers. You should not have multiple people in the studio. This, we're here to create music for the masses. I don't even care if you want to be an underground rapper and have that cool shit. We are here to entertain people. You need other people's opinions. You may not be an expert in every last bit of that four minutes. Any rapper or artist that says they do fucking everything, down to Prince might be the only exception and even he had help. Hmm. Why would I ever want to hear from an artist that didn't have help? That shit is crazy to me. I appreciate that perspective because everybody thinks it's like some type of sacrilege. Oh my God, somebody helped him with his rhymes. Let's put, all right, No ID, Jay-Z. 444 I think is one of the most recent, in my opinion, my own opinion, one of the most classic modern day things. I don't necessarily always want to have No ID do the keys. No ID knows someone that could do keys better than his keys. Jay-Z knows someone that could write a hook better than he could write a hook. Fill in the blanks at your strengths. You could still be the GOAT. What, what the fuck is wrong with having help? You think I wanted Drake to have someone else write uh, Just Hold On, We're Going Home? Like, it, this ain't <laughs> it's a, the same balance. This ain't a clickbait comment, but it's like what Consequence said. We going for the win. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I was, I had to agree. Yo, y'all agreed on the same I was thing. A little, I was a little nervous giving y'all the address. <laughs> oh, nah, nah. That's, you're the third person to say that. You gonna bring somebody there with you? Go, like, bro. Man. I was up, I'm up, because I just had a daughter, so I'm up early. So I was like 5 a.m. I was like, man, I might give them the wrong address and just, just walk just them. Just to look and see. Yo, that's <laughs> smart, actually. Like, just, just in case. I ain't gonna lie to you. We've done that before. <laughs> what, giving people the wrong address? Just slightly the wrong address so we yeah, can see. Yeah, you gotta see where, where people yeah. end up. Like, yo, I agree with parking that. Parking garage, a few, few blocks down, I'm gonna have some people look. But you got all the FBI cameras, so you saw us a mile away. <laughs> and peace to consequence. Nah, of course. Oh, gosh, here we go. Well, Khan's a great writer. No? He is. Yeah. Hans has collaborated with a lot of people and added a lot of good shit. Oh, no, I'm making it awkward. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. It's all quick. Queens get the money. I'm. I'm Queens get the money. <laughs> like I told Cons, that's my guy. Uh, <laughs> Cons, don't take their it. laughing as me being disrespectful. I'm, <laughs> no, no, what, no, I, no. what I told y'all, I'm happy to talk to him. No, you did tell me that when we spoke on the phone. You was like, man, you ain't tripping off of that. I told, I, told, I told him that you would want to talk to him too, but you know, Cons is an artsy dude. Yeah. So everything is like, I, 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 I want to see like when it's right, what, cool, what, what I, platform and how we're going to do it and all that type of stuff. Also, but, respectfully, I don't care. Like, yeah, in he the told same me way, that from Rip. He's like, I'll speak to him, but I also don't care. Does that make sense? Okay. No, he's the same way. He just don't give a fuck. I, like, we can speak. If we don't ever speak, cool. Speaking of collaboration, would you and Joe ever work together again? Collab would you ever work with Matt Hoffa again? That's why I'm asking. And he can no, 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 Absolutely not. I have no issues with math. Cause let, let, cause I asked him that question. Let's 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 make it fair. Cause you know the answer. Let's do it. No. Let's be fair. He oh, said no with good. Joe, no I with Matt. If you like, subscribe. I also like, over. but I'm also on the side like backside. I just don't. I fuck with y'all and I like what y'all are building. I don't really care if y'all ever work. That's just not even in my brain. You know why? To to think about that. Mm -hmm. You know what it is? I think as because I think y'all have a great thing. So. The power of collaboration is interesting, and um, sometimes as men, when we get older, we can hash things out and come together and work things out. I don't think that's always the case, but there's yeah. a certain magic 
that you, Maul, and Joe had that people might want to see Great, for it once. Was the greatest podcast of all time. Hey, I don't disagree. It was. You know, everybody was tuned in, press and play, and sometimes people want to have that moment. When we posted up that picture, everybody's like, oh my God, this is back. And I'm like, no, it's not. I mean, I, I don't really have much to say on the situation. No, you, no, that's all. And I'm not I really avoiding anything. I, yeah, no, it's just. That's, and, I, and I'm one of those people that tries to never say no because anything is possible. But as yeah. far as a working, working together, no, never. Not even for a one-off. Can't see it. Got you. What's I couldn't the, even see what a one-off would 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 look like. A, a doc? documentary. <sighs> see that? See that's like where. If I wanted to do a doc on the beefs of podcasts, I would get us in it. Y'all in it? Oh my! <laughs> Why would we be in it? I don't got no beef with nobody. You know what I'm saying? Somebody's gonna put together that in a few years, 10, 20 years from now. That's gonna be a thing. But then I would say, all of us, even though we may not rock with another side, there's no fucking way another production company is about to do a doc on a beef about all of us, and they just hiring us to yeah. walk in and get a fee. No. In that case. That would be a world I would work with somebody I don't fuck with. Like, mm. if Honestly, we were to do something doc. together that was about this shit, and we don't really like the business is straight and everything is cool, that would be a place. It was a moment. It was a, a iconic moment within the biggest genre currently. Mm -hmm. It warrants a documentary for sure. But nah, if some other person came around, I know Joe would never do that shit either. Somebody was like, yo, I just want to cover the whole podcast beef. I think respectfully, all of us would tell them to go fuck themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless we were all doing that together, nah. You're not about to profit off our beef. <laughs> no fucking way. Yeah, it's real a, shit. That's a fact. <laughs> like not even, not even a little bit. You said with Danny, he profits nothing but off beef. You talking about Danny from the start? I mean, but I did an interview with him. What's, yeah, like he does nothing but profit off beef. You think so? That's not a document. If if Danny from the stop came and was like, yo. I want to do a documentary about the entire thing. I would say no to him within a heartbeat. He wanted to do an interview with me and that was it. But that's what I wanted to ask. Now, it's a different, do you think there's a difference between clickbaiting and manipulating the algorithm? Because that's what a lot of dudes are working towards the algorithm to boost up their numbers. It's a good how, question. I, how, how do you manipulate the algorithm? It's almost like you, you're giving titles that's going to register and push your videos forward. So like Danny, he's figured out he knows if he mentions. I don't know. No, I don't no, you know don't know him. That's not. Is. But he knows your name can yeah. garner at least forty thousand views by itself. That's what found yeah, So we can just throw Rory name. We oh yeah, it's up. We clickbait Rory to death <laughs> on this joint. Like, that's just what it is. <laughs> I, don't, I don't fuck with clickbait, but we can about it. That going to clickbait the, the, the DJ Envy interview. The biggest views was came off of our name being in the title and saying he don't fuck with us. Yeah. He said he don't fuck well, with Well, you know, clearly, but that's still clickbait. He fuck with everybody. Who don't fuck with everybody? Fuck with us. Yeah, nice. I'm a nice nah. guy, baby. <laughs> but that's what I, I used to think I was the nice guy, but <laughs> apparently I'm a dickhead and I had no fucking idea. <laughs> I, used, I used to think the same thing about myself. <laughs> I was walking around like, no, nah, I'm just, I'm nice to everybody. I'm a nice the guy. Yeah, man. Like, I'm chilling. I ain't got no problem with nobody. Like, next, no. Next thing I know, I'm you're getting... the devil. You're the villain. It's you. It's hey. you. And I'll be like, what? I didn't even do shit. Next thing I know, I'm getting kicked out of a Donda show. <laughs> oh my God! God, that was my fault. Uh, listen, that was my listen. fault. That was my fault. Yo, if they, um, if they say you're not good at this, they lying. <laughs> Yo, what's the key to you and Maul's tightness and trust in the relationship? Transparency. I know it sounds like a very political answer, um, and I think I was talking to Danny actually in that interview I did with him. Good business is super easy. It's mm. easy just to have everything on the table when you don't feel like you have to manipulate the people that you're working with. Mm -hmm. like it's, mm -hmm. You don't have to have an angle with the people that you work with. I get when negotiating and people outside of the circle, you have to be on your shark shit. And yeah, you do need 48 laws of power. I get it. Manipulate people. That's how this, this game works, unfortunately. But within your own circle, no, nah, everything is right there. Like what, what do we even need to lie or manipulate about? This is what's going on. What's your opinion? It's my opinion. Let's come to a, a, a truth. It's super easy to do good business. I hate that when I entered into this business, I thought that no matter what, you had to do shiesty business because that's all that was like that's put in front of you. That's what thought, yeah. really? I mean, it, just the environment of the entertainment business yields that from the rip. Like, mm. I started out as the fucking intern going to grab fucking Dutch's 
on Liberty Avenue. Like I walking out of Slow Buck Studio for Shaw Money trying to just get Duchess. That's what was my first introduction to shit. Then I got to the buildings and I was like, oh, this is just who could lie better? This shit is just shysty everywhere. It it really doesn't have to be that way within your inner circle. Like at all. And I mean, Maul and I are lucky to have, you know, about 12 employees, so it's easy to have transparency am amongst the company. I can't really speak to, you know, when I was at Def Jam, it's 150. Every, there's gonna be clicks, it's all gonna be fucked up. So let me not speak on something I don't fully know, but yeah, it, you can speak to people with truth. I don't understand why that's so tough for people. A lot of people who can't handle the truth. Mm -hmm. Could that be it? Maybe, or people are greedy. Listen, I've looked at, I don't even wanna sound like the high moral ground guy. I've looked at checks and went like, damn, I have to cut this this way, this way, this way, this I way. I think everybody does that. That shit sucks. Yeah. Like it, it really does suck when you're there, but at what expense? If I'm here for the long haul, what, I'm gonna cut somebody out for the short term first check and then fuck up the next five years? There's a lot of podcasters up, that don't Fuck up my reputation. You. Like I just don't, and that's, I swear that's not a shot at anyone specifically. I'm oh, talking I, about I'm in my own experiences. Like I went through deals like, all right, damn, lawyer getting 5%. Got two managers on this side. That's 10%, 10%. Mm -hmm. Okay, UTA gets 10%. All right, expensive. Oh, fuck. I, this deal, I don't have shit here. And I can see why someone would get shysty in that and try to cut out everybody else so they could net a profit. But if we're here for the long haul, yeah, that first year, I'm going to take a couple losses. Second year, I'm going to try to make a little bit more money, but I'm going to have to take more L's. Like, if you want to, it sounds like some real cliche shit, but if you want to be the fucking boss, yeah. Take the L's, bro. That's what you're here for. If you want to have the luxury and that mm. stat to make your ego feel a little better and be the fucking boss, just be cool with not making the same amount of money. Stick to what you agreed to with everyone in your circle and move forward. Because at the end of the day, if you believe in your vision and your talent, by year five, you will be light gears ahead of your employees and everyone that you gave money to when you weren't making any money. The difference will show if you believe in yourself, but you got to take those L for those first few years. Like, I pay the cost to be the boss. What type of it L's? It sounds cliche, but that's really what it is. But that's what mm. people don't want to do. They want to call themselves the boss and still want to ma manipulate people and pretend like is that's that, not. Is that what they was taught? Because remember, yeah. when, remember when you said when you came to the business, mm. you felt like that you was, you, you, you was looking at it and you say, who, who can be the most shysty? I guess my issue with everything is the people that have been through the music industry for so long and have preached how fucked up it is, love, love to preach how fucked up the music industry is and how they got fucked over. And yo, we got to stop with these standard, these standard contracts that fuck everybody over. And then when they do it, it's like, well, that's standard business. Yep. It's like, wait, I thought you, that's I true. thought we wanted to change this. Mm -hmm. Now that it benefits you, that standard is fine. Mm -hmm. I'm of the belief that you can do good business and not do the standard fuck everybody over contract. Or if you want to do that contract, stick to it. At least stick to the fucked up standard contract. Mm -hmm. Don't pay me. What were some of the losses you and Mo was taking when y'all ventured out on your own? Because people think it's easy to make money in this and even big shows have to really struggle to get the money. We, we, came, we came from a big show, which even though I'll say we helped build, I give Joe all the credit as well in that regard, we set a high standard as far as production value goes. Mm -hmm. That was not a cheap production value by any means at all. Coming out of that deal and having to keep that same standard, like people were used to seeing and hearing Maul and I in a certain frame. Mm. Coming out the gate with no deal before we started shopping, like, yeah, coming out of pocket for, for rentals that were on black magic cameras was not fucking easy. And that's what people were used to seeing us. And we can't right. go to a lower value because then that lowers our brand. Then that even perception wise, people are like, oh damn, see they, they drop down, look at that, shit's crazy. That was the toughest, like, toughest thing to keep that production value while also trying to navigate a completely new business. And on top of that, Mo and I's chemistry was from that show. We're starting a, a brand new fucking show chemistry. out the gate. Yeah, like we had to do that too. We had to find our chemistry. Like Mo and I definitely had chemistry, but a one-on-one -on -one chemistry like that was a whole new versus obstacle. with three people. It's yeah. It's so all. you have to do that on a creative side. 
we didn't technically like really have managers like that at that time as far as potting went. Mm-hmm. We had Hop and my man Benner. Benner now manages the podcast. Yeah, it was kind of like, all right, fuck. Let me manage my emotions of something that I was dealing with for God knows how long. That shit breaks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now we have to figure out what we're going to do in this small window that we have. And I'm not saying that to discredit us. I'm just saying how the internet works. You only have so much time when that break happens to make a fucking moment to continue on for the next five years. So let me capitalize on this. So you got to deal with emotions, finances, chemistry. Where the fuck are we going to record? What are we going to talk about that isn't just based off our breakup? Like, this is a whole new show. What are we going to cover? Are we just going to be shade room? Like, are we just going to cover the same things that we covered on the last part? It's a fucking tornado that I don't think people realize. And also wouldn't really give a fuck about because they're listeners and that's not their woes or their concern. Mm. Their concern is entertainment. So you also have to think of it that way. I'm not going to have sympathy with the listeners. They here for a good show. I don't give a fuck what's happening in your life. You had a breakup, go deliver the same show. Shit is tough. And I'll give the same grace to Joe too. He lost two thirds of his podcast. I mean, granted, he still had all the equipment and all the staff. That's helpful. (laughs) <laughs> he does, and all the money it's not me in fucking Atlanta trying to record my album and trying to upload a fucking um, YouTube video at 6am while I'm trying to record music at the exact same time because I don't we, a breakup just happened and I don't have a staff like that's another monster but yeah it's tough like with with breakups you don't have your production crew or your can't like that shit this is expensive <laughs> uh, yes I don't think people understand the work that goes in to what we do to be good. Yeah. Because some people, because there's a lot of people that just put the camera on, they film, they throw it up. Some of it's good, some of it's cool. They take time to get better. But to be good and to maintain the standard and to work all the time, even when you don't want to work. I, I woke up today and I was like, all I wanted to do was the Rory interview. Because it was at four o'clock, I could fuck around, smoke, mm-hmm. chill. But we had another interview that we tried to squeeze in, and they we fucking, recorded before y'all came, and they and they, oh, no, yeah, and they canceled. Like oh, okay, like we on the way there, the interview for one thirty is twelve forty one, and they canceled. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, people don't understand. We in the Bronx. We we paid money to go over there, mm-hmm. gas and toll. He's meeting us there. Got a double back to come back down. And I'm like, yo, we just you know we just take it in, in stride and understand it's part of the job. And as much as like we have like a core fan base, you know, I'd be in the comments, I'd be in the Reddits, I'd, I'd be in the Twitter communities. Like I'm pretty close with our core fan base. Also, have to realize like outside of them and even them included, nobody gives a fuck. Like, do I wish I could be in a position and know like I'm not shitting on like a Stephen A. or Shannon Sharp? Would I love to just show up, sit down with my notes and record? Hell yeah. But I also have to run a business as well with it. So that becomes not only am I creative, I'm running the entire business as well with Mo included. That's tough. Like running a production meeting, making sure socials are good, making sure marketing's good, everything that's happening, and then, then sitting down is very tasking. And it, it takes a lot out of you, but the fans don't give a fuck. Bro, they want to make sure this is good. So as much as I like to talk about that stuff, nobody gives a fuck. Well, they, they, they have their own jobs. They have their own lives. They, woe is me does not work with any podcast fan. Bro, they want to be entertained. Listen, I, I, I know you're doing well based on the crew neck you're wearing. This is old. I didn't... No, listen, you need an appointment to buy that. This is a very old Ami. That was I just appreciate. that day. They, you know, it's not always the appointment. It's not always the appointment. It, it was that day, bro. And shout out to them because they from Queens. They are, yeah. Shout out to Queen. I mean, they've definitely changed a bit. Sorry, See? sorry, Teddy. <laughs> They're around the corner. I, I, yeah. the, we go there. I've been looking over there. I'm like, this is not what that shop used to be, man. I don't like <laughs> this whole fucking line. I don't even recognize some of the employees. Not you important. know how they got switched to employee. You know how this new day and age is. Oh, I'm, I'm so not proud of Nobody Teddy. get too comfortable. Everybody got to get up out of here. I'm, I'm gold status over there because I spend money over there. I don't, I don't ask for free shit. I respect everything Teddy has done, and that's why. With the Queen shit, I hate that Queens gets like the bad fashion rep. If you look at what everybody loves right now, it's Kith and Ame. Where are both people from? They from Queens. Queens. Yeah, Queens. 
So That's like Brooklyn, fact. Harlem, I respect y'all, but uh -huh. all the fashion y'all wearing right now is from Queens. Uh -huh. And Ben, and we've been we've been trendsetters with the fashion okay, back. Uh, clearly, Run this DMC. is gonna be a clip. <laughs> back, back with Run DMC and the, the Adidas. And, and the Adidas. We had a nasty and, run though. And, we had and a, leaves. We had a nasty run. We was we were looking nuts for a while. When? What what time frame? Mid two thousands. We was looking crazy. Who was mid two thousand? Who you think? I mean, just just as a borough, like as a whole, we was not doing. He's talking about anything <laughs> from 05 to two eleven. I would say 03. To, oh, three. To, <laughs> to 2022, yeah. Oh, three. That's a long run, bro. Oh, three to 2020. This hurts me to say this. I'm not happy to hey, say this. from I'm, 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 oh, This hurts me a lot. 20. Yeah, we, Remember, he's younger than individu us. No, individually, I was doing fine. There was a bunch of people that could dress, but as a bro. No, no, no. no. I, I would agree. We're not, we not on, we, we're, we're not on the, fa we're not the fashion borough. You know, and I'm saying now, finally, the we only, can be the fashion we can borough. Be the first, all we was ever on was sneakers. Like, Queens dudes would have regular, whatever. It was cars, because we was a borough of cars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a two fair You wear whatever the fuck you want in a car. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody in Queens got their license before any other borough. Yeah. Of That's understood. Even the We girls. had a driveway in the backyard. It was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, but we, we wasn't, they not, they not fashion. They not with the drip and all that. I'm not going front on that. We not on Yeah, we but a car the supersedes the drip, Bree. I think the G-Unit sneakers could make a comeback, like with this whole vintage I agree. Shit. The way Reebok did those, I think they can make a comeback. What you think, yes? If, I, if, actually, if Reebok does it correctly with Shaq and AI, I think they could make that shit cool again. If they bought out the Shaqs, AIs, and well, the no, a, AI sneakers, and Shaq are now no, like they the, running Reebok. the ambassadors. Mm. The ambassador, that's how the um that's how the Bayou Barbie got the deal. They bought the Bayou I like Barbie that. over there. Yeah, they've been over there. They've been ambassadors. That's 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 what they're doing. It's it's a good play for Reebok to bring them in. They're they need the boosters. Yeah, Reebok, Reebok needs the boost. I'm not mad at that. Um, you say you and Maul doing doing business now. Were you always businessman, or did you uh, yeah. did you work in did you work to get better at business? I mean, I hate to sound corny. Every day is to to work better at it. Um, I mean, outside of the pod and working at labels, you know, I did the the Henny Palooza slash Duce Palooza thing, about to ask you. which was you know another staff of fourteen people, fourteen different problems. At an open bar party, it was it was fucking wild. So that was my first like real crash course into being a businessman. Mm -hmm. um, but so much of that was like with your friends figuring it out. Whereas now it's it's a bit different. I'm older. I have a different perspective. It's not so much a go with the flow that it may have been with Palooza. Um, but wasn't my my first introduction to where we are now. Just different perspective would be the way I would put it. Who, who came in your life to help y'all either maintain this or take y'all to the next level? What was the person? Was it an agent? Was it a manager? What was it? Between Ma and I? Yeah, because you said that when y'all transitioned, it was just y'all. There was no equipment. There was no nothing. Now you got agents, staff. Who came in, who came in that, that actually made uh, the difference with y'all? Like a force multiplier. Nobody. So I mean, UTA definitely assisted us Tremendously, like we're what still with, we're still with UTA. Um, what as far as as far as shopping deals, for sure, yeah. UTA was was great in that. Um, and it never never hurts to have somebody like UTA and Oren, who was the head of podcasting, whatever magazine rated him number one podcasting agent. Like that never hurts. But as far as like the day to day, the grind, putting this whole shit together, no, it was, that was Maul and I, and our staff, Damaris, Julian, Page, Benner, like that. Edin, like that was our crew. It was us, really. I can't think of anyone that came in and did that. And I try to be humble, but nah, like nobody really came in. We had assistants, don't get me wrong, but that was our staff, like us, just as a crew. Hennessy was dead in the water. Nobody cared, and y'all gave them life. Let's keep it real. I, I'm with you. And then they hate on you. What, why? Why couldn't it work out? So I was, um, I was working at Havas Media at the time I was doing Henny Palooza with everybody else. Mm. And we had LVMH as one of our, our clients. So I was well aware of what Hennessy was doing and what, who they were trying to target. And it wasn't Henny Palooza. The, the target, they were trying to get away from the stigma of black people 
Like, just to be honest with y'all. <laughs> like, that's really what was happening. Wow. And, I mean, but we've seen that with a lot of, of French companies, especially in the liquor business. That the people that make them the money are not the target they want to be a part of. Mm. And I don't think Henny was the first one. We saw it, everything that, that Jay and Dane went through. It's, it's nothing new. But yeah, Henny wanted nothing to do with us, even when we had no fights, no incidents, no nothing. Like It was nothing but a positive, beautiful event, and they just weren't interested. But I mean, I get it. I don't know. I guess that's too much liability to them. I, I've made peace with it, is all I'm saying. I, mean, really? I, I was very angry when I was 23. I'm 33 now. So <laughs> they, yeah, they, of course they wanted nothing to do with that. They were trying to make Hennessy look like a very high-end brand, even though it's $40 cognac. And the French people that they were trying to target were not buying it, but they still, that, that's what they wanted to do. And it's one of those family businesses where they're just going to rehire the youngest person in their family to run the entire thing. And they don't give a fuck about that business. So that's, that's where it was left. Are y'all going to do more events? Do you ever think about getting back into the event thing and doing it again? Um, no. Me personally, not at all. Um, as far as Palooza went, everybody, I was the youngest person in Palooza. So everyone's older now. It, it'll never happen. We've all moved on with our lives. And I think everyone's past that event space thing. Like, that shit was a lot. Like, traveling, at, at one year, I think we did 22 dates. And you got to think that's an open bar party that's, that's tough to, to just manage. It's tough. I could never imagine doing that now. It was great when I was 24, but no, nah, it'll never happen. It was, it was a, a moment in time that I'll always appreciate and cherish. Like, it almost damn near feels like a dream to me looking back at the shit. But yes, that shit is over, man. How come I didn't see you on the boat? Boat? I was on the boat. I still have the video footage, September 11th. I was on the boat. I didn't see you, though. Not where we was at, I don't know. Maybe that, it was a big boat? It was a, it was a pretty big boat, but... Yeah. What boat are y'all talking about? He know what boat I'm talking about. <laughs> so why we can't know the boat? Why we can't I still know have, the boat? I still have the footage. Um, I'll even send y'all. I'll, I'll What's find the, the footage. Boat? What's the boat? So we did Coney, Coney Island uh, art walls. Like, we popped that off. I heard and, about and that. that. Respectfully was... to Coney Island art walls, they've, they've done a lot for themselves, but we were just the first event that they ever took, like, a risk on. Um, so we did Palooza there. I think it was the same one. Was it the Young MA? That was the same. A and, a and Joe. Yeah, we had, young, we had Young MA come out, and that was when Ooh was like the hottest song in the summer. So we did a boat party after. I don't want to take the credit for it. Who? I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> Damn, I forgot, I forgot my man's name. So there was a boat party. This gentleman grabbed like a bunch of different parties to do it. Just some after shit. So that became the official after party for Palooza. We all ran to, to Chelsea Piers from Coney Island at midnight. And the boat maybe left for like five minutes. And Father, was it Father Stretch My Arms? I think, I, whatever Kanye record was out at that time, everybody from Palooza started knocking the fucking roof off, off the top third floor of the boat and all the asbestos, like the whole ceiling caved in. They turned that boat right the fuck around. It was supposed to be a four hour cruise. It was supposed to be a four hour cruise. The first DJ set, they was leaving the dock, whole shit collapsed, and then we just all had to get off. By 12.30, we were back on the dock. I played Mac Wiles. Mac, Mac was right next, I have the, I was next to Mac, I have all the footage. That footage that went viral was from my phone. I was standing next to Mac, next to Austin. Yeah, it was, that was a wild time. That was a different time. Where do you think that this podcasting space should be going to? Because I think it's messy as hell right now. Mm. I think all podcast spaces should go to where podcasters think their audience wants to go. There's no longer a wide audience that's just here for podcasting. We see it with the deals. The casual fan is done. People that have their core fan bases should try to build their core. But yeah, wherever that core wants to go. How do you build you your core? What's some advice on building your core? So you got followers, you got subscribers, and all that stuff. What's, what's advice to, to build it, though? I mean, back to the algorithm shit, unfortunately. Like, I don't want to sugarcoat it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stay within what your core wants, but you do need to play with the algorithm. Sometimes you need title shit differently. 
Sometimes you need to talk about something that everyone's talking about to make sure you're talking about it differently. Like, if this is the, the topic from the shade room that week, what's the angle that I could find that's gonna be different than everything that enters the algorithm? Instead of just reacting to like, oh, hey, this person's doing this at this time. Like, all right, the Kendrick, Drake, Future, all that shit. How can I find a different angle to react to this? It's not trying to go viral, but you do need to play with the algorithms if you do want to grow a podcast. But to your original question, there is no wide audience for podcasting anymore. It's our fan bases and who else we can grab. So you think it's shrunk now? Hell yeah. Why do you think it's shrunk? Because it's, it's more podcasts out? No, because it, it was just another, yeah, more choices. It's another fad that existed the, the same way mixtapes existed, the same way t-shirts, like when everyone was doing merch. It's just the, the next thing that was happening. Everyone was doing it. It was the moment for the time. And whoever was really good at it is still going to be here and still make money. Yes. So focus on the people that stayed with you and then play with the algorithms. How would you make money off of those people? Because you got to make money in order to keep going, to finance yourself, to do something that you love. Like, what, what are your ideas of, of making money if they don't have a deal? If they got UTA and they shopping themselves a good deal, Different, yeah. then, then cool. But if you don't have a deal, how, how would you feed the people and make money off of them to keep your business going? Subscription-based? Merch. You have to get unique and creative. That's one of those things that you really can't give the answer to people, just the structure. Oh. We're direct to consumer at all times. Like, find a way, because I, I don't know everyone's audience. I just know my audience. I know what will work for them and what they will pay for. If you have a full understanding of who your audience is, that's step one. Then you can figure out how to monetize that. Because if you get a, a fan base that gives a fuck about you and what you're actually doing, I don't know, are they into t-shirts? Are they into fucking ashtrays? What are they into where you can actually move some profit here? It's the same thing with music too. Artists now are not making money off streams. They're just utilizing their celebrity to sell it's other shit. Other shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the same thing in podcasting. Everything about this is just attention, clicks, views, and what can you monetize off that? If, if you're not in the space where you can sit in your basement and stream and get a deal from Rumble or get a deal from Twitch. But you'd be surprised at the people that don't have those opportunities that make the exact same amount of money yeah. with paywalls, with merch, with other shit. We saw it in the boom of the independent artists when lab major labels were going crazy. Mm -hmm. Currency was selling more merch than any major label artist and was making more money. It's the same thing in podcasting now. We, we are at the boom of the independent artist in podcasting, the same way the music industry went through it too. The majors were controlling mm -hmm. everything. Then we got the blog era with all the rappers and we watched that whole era make so much fucking money independently. We are in the same place with podcasting. The boom is over. Spotify's, Spotify allowed Joe Rogan to post his shit everywhere. The boom is done. It's done. Now it's time to get creative and figure out your core fan base and what that core fan base wants. For example, Smokers Club, Currency, uh, Dizza, Crit, everything that they were doing with Shipes, that's a perfect example. How can you transfer that to the podcast world? They made money as independent artists when the majors were starting to crumble. When the majors only knew how to market Rihanna, Kanye, they were struggling with Big Sean when he had a hit record at that mm -hmm. time. And then you saw these rappers making so much fucking money independently. That's where the podcast world is now. How can you do the shit through AdSense and then utilize that AdSense for your overhead and then figure out how to make some real money? We're in the independent rap world with podcasting. How do you get with AdSense? No, AdSense is what pays you off for YouTube. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. AdSense that's is what they call it. AdSense. Okay, I got you. I got you. I thought that that was a whole nother nah, thing. No, that's what they call it. Where they pay you because AdSense don't be paying them now. No, of course not. They no, absolutely not. Same, same way, <laughs> but same way, like, even when, like, let's use currency again as an example. Like, when currency would put his shit on iTunes, yeah, he was making not $9.99 off your album, but I don't think currency ever looked at his iTunes sales as like his main shit. He was on tour, he was on merch, he was on all other shit. That's where his focus was. Same way now with podcasting. You're not going to get your money off YouTube. Like, you'll, make, you'll make some money. 
but like maybe that'll help with some overhead, but that's that's it. But YouTube, I'm not one of like the YouTube haters. Like YouTube has a community. They allow us to easily put all our shit in a community of people. That's what ghosts. They 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 fuck us. Don't get me wrong. YouTube fucks us. I don't mm-hmm. think they don't. But I'm also cool with having that community because it allows me to utilize that community to actually make money elsewhere. Outsource. So if I'm YouTube, yeah, I'm going to tell y'all, go fuck yourself. Like, I do get it. Because there's no other alternative unless you have a paywall, but that's based on your popularity. And also, could you imagine building YouTube since whatever, 2005, Five, four, that, yeah. whatever, whenever the fuck it got popular? Mm-hmm. They probably started in 1990 and we don't even know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could look at everyone else like, I built this entire community. No, I'm not about to pay y'all more. Like, this whole community exists already, whether your podcast is here or not, bro. But doesn't, but and does, it, that's fucked up, but I get it. Yeah, but doesn't that go to that business model that we talked about at the beginning that's trash? That we saying that the people that's making the money don't want to pay the people who deserve to get the money? And they're being, and they're turning around and being greedy because they don't want to pay out to the people who should be paying now? Now, if YouTube paid us out more, say they gave us more than one dollar out of every six hundred, say they gave you twenty dollars out of every six hundred, that would enable us to make more money, to do other things, to put up better content for them to turn and make better, make more money. You don't think? No, because then that that just gets weird. Of you, t- how do you even gauge YouTube paying more for better content? Because what defines better content? Because back no, to what I'm, we're I'm saying, about, like, we would make, we would then in turn. If you, it's, it's like music, if we gonna call it music, right? You got an artist, they got a, they got a hit record out, they're not making a lot of money. It's hard to create, deal with your popularity because you gotta pay more money now because you're more popular, you can't do the things that you once did. And that money will help settle a lot of things in order, and help you then put yourself in a better space to go create better music. That's the reason why labels give you an advance from the beginning is to say, here, I'm going to give you this money so you don't have to go work and do all that funky fly stuff that you was doing and you can concentrate and make us a hit record. I guess the difference is, and I'm sure there's something in the fine print, Mm -hmm. YouTube doesn't own our IP or our masters. Okay. I'm sure at some point in the next 40 years, we'll find out that YouTube does own our IP. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and they already did, and they were making but, back-end money. But at and stuff at, like at that. this point, right now, like, say if I wanted to take all my video off or take my back catalog that's all on YouTube and wanted to sell it to Spotify, I could. You, YouTube would never tell me no. At this point, they would never say no. So I guess it's different in that sense. YouTube is really just offering their community and their services and allowing, they're licensing our video to sell it against ads. Like, I mean, after. I, I, like, I get why people are mad at YouTube, but I also, like, I get it. it. It does make sense. It's the number two search engine right after Google. A podcaster that doesn't have a UTA or doesn't have anyone else shopping their shit within the industry, like, what to do? You have YouTube, bro. Yeah, you're gonna get fucked in money, but that community doesn't really have a value. Even if you feel like you're owed a lot of money from it, that is a community that is invaluable. Like, I could throw anything on YouTube I want, and I have the ability to reach more people than any other fucking space at all, especially when it comes to podcasting. Spotify, if I throw my shit on, people are there for the most part for music. We even saw Spotify between the deal they did with us, Amy Schumer, Michelle Obama, Rogan. People are not going to that that specific app for podcasting the way they are for music. And they're really getting fucked as musicians. Yeah, we getting fucked as podcasters and YouTube, but at least there's some benefit. If I'm an independent artist and trying to get my shit out there, I got to go to Spotify. I just have to go there. That's where the community is. And that's a consumer thing. So we can feel like we getting fucked, but I'm one of those people that deals with the reality rather than what I think something should be. I'm I'm big tinfoil hat man. I'm big on. I'm big I, like on I'm a cons- I'm a conspiracy person. I, I'm, I'm trust me. I stay up late nights doing all the rabbit holes that make me into an insane person. But when it comes to this business shit, I am very much someone that lives in reality. This is what it is. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna change that. I've seen people far higher up in the chain try to change it and couldn't do shit. 
I'm gonna utilize what's going on right now for my benefit. Could it be, um, let's go through a conspiracy thought process. The government told YouTube, let's not pay these dudes so much because it could fracture the economy. Because we've seen dudes make six figures off the low scale of what it is with YouTube. Now, if it goes up higher, what's the point of going to college? What's the point of working at McDonald's if I could start getting my YouTube rocking and the pay scale is higher? A lot of people wouldn't go to work. Everybody's not going to do that. They're not going to make mean, that money. It, it's not in the cards. YouTube, YouTube, the YouTube cards. is the gas station. YouTube is the gas station. Mm -hmm. They're going to fluctuate whatever the fuck they want to with the price. Yeah. But no matter what, my car and me filling that gas tank up is going to benefit my life to operate it. And no matter what, I'm going to get fucked. I it need, is what it is. I, I need the gas. But I need the gas and I need to use it to benefit my life and I'm going to make a lot more fucking money even when that shit says 475 for premium fucking gas. It's no and, it, and it sucks. And it yeah. sucks. I get it. But also, what are we going to sit here? We're going to sit Indian style and fucking cry about the YouTube numbers? Or am I going to find a way to utilize what the fuck this community is doing so I can make some money? Because... I could cry on YouTube about what AdSense is giving me, and I would be right, and I'd probably get more views doing it. Nothing's gonna change. Nothing. So do we just stay here? We just <laughs> no. We utilize we what the fuck we can it. do right now, and figure it out. Like, dog, YouTube's not changing. Like, they're just not. None of none of the major. Companies. Unless YouTube's listen, YouTube's not changing. The if music everybody, not if changing. everybody decided. If all of us, and when I mean all of us, decided fuck YouTube and we not putting our shit up there, I'm with y'all all day. I'm on that type of time. But I know everybody's not on that type of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so what the fuck am I going to do here? Yeah, yeah. So, listen, right. I'm also putting music out. If every artist wants to go, yo, fuck Spotify, fuck this, this DSP shit, until they raise that .001 cent I get off a stream, we not giving them no music. I'm, which, I'm leading that with y'all. Trust me, I will be the loudest fucking person y'all can think of. But I know nobody is on that time. So what, my daughter's not gonna eat? <laughs> That's fair. Like, I'm not about to sit here and be the fucking loud person and, and not eat. So yeah, yeah no, it. AdSense, YouTube, community, figure it's great. It I'll figure it out. With Spotify, I'll figure this shit out. Like, do I agree we need a union? Do I agree that we should all stop <laughs> doing this shit? <laughs> yes, but nobody's going to fucking do that. Nobody's going on so strike. So I'm going to try to utilize the attention I get from that community to make real money. Because no fucking way am I going to have my family starve based off of a loud dream of me yelling like, we need more money on ad space. Like, nah. <laughs> I agree with you on that. So where do you think that you and Marl going to go? Because it seemed like that y'all you're looking and thinking and seeing and around people that are bigger than this podcast YouTube space. What's the next thing? Because y'all do skits. Is it movies? Is it writing? Going on tour. Y'all tours always sell out too, mm -hmm. which is very difficult to do. Hardest fucking thing to do. How, how, did, how did that come about? Because people really think they have an audience and when they put a show together, they are lucky to get 10 and you guys are doing big venues in different cities and countries. I mean, that goes back to like focusing on your core fan base, like really interacting people, utilizing Discord, you, utilizing the comments, utilizing Reddit, utilizing Twitter spaces. Like this podcasting shit makes people feel like they're so connected to you and they are. Mm -hmm. So speaking back to them outside of episodes is helpful. Like even like if you're talking to 300 people, that may not seem like a lot to some people. It does make sense when you're selling out venues in Charlotte that are 400 people. And then you come to New York and you can do 2,000 people. Like it all resonates everywhere the more you tap in with your fan base. Like always back to music. J. Cole, Dollar and a Dream Tour. When he was signed to a major, he was, instead of taking his budget to do other shit, let's make sure I'm gonna hit every city and my, my tour is $1. Every fan can come for $1. He built a fan base that has been with him since fucking 2010. You just have to really speak to your audience. And that, that's where I feel Mo and I have done the best. We're, we're tapped in with who we fuck with. The rest is clickbait shit. I mean, when I come to a live <laughs> show of yours, if I came to a live show, 
What am I getting? What am I paying for? Um, we podcast for like maybe 10 minutes and we do segments. It's like a variety show, the best way I'll put it. Um, we have the screen behind us. We've done Jeopardy. We've done um, like tour confessions. We, everything is very much audience based. Like the audience screams answers. Interaction. Yeah. It's, it's a variety show. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's potting for like a minute. You, you, you have a DJ? Do, do people We've come had DJs out before. And, and perform and all that different type of stuff? We've done that too. Um, we launched the My Karma's Beautiful platform, which is a live performance part of our podcast. We've had that at shows. Like, it's, it's the best date night you could think of. When you, when you DC had, had our, we had our first uh, fight of all time. I had a fight in at, DC at, at, at a at a fucking podcast live podcast. Bro? I used to think it was crazy when people fought at R and B shows. <laughs> Somebody fought at a at Howard Theater. This dude started scrapping with security. All the chairs, like they weren't chairs that were like built into the ground, just cleared out. Yeah, full blown fight. But what did you find out why? He was like drunk or some shit. I don't know. But we potted through the whole thing. <laughs> While they were scrapping? Yeah. No, we commentated the whole thing. Oh, look at the left hook. Get him, get yeah, him. Yeah, pretty Rory, much. watch the right. Even <laughs> oh, wow. You seen that, that Chris Brown clip where he was like, oh, he's getting it over there. And like, oh, they started ducking it. That's pretty much what happened. <laughs> well, what made you want to put music out? I mean, it's been my life since I could breathe. Yeah. Everything was was built off music my entire life. So, would you quit doing everything if you could be a recording star? No, um, because I, I enjoy giving my opinion out to the world. I, I I enjoy this podcast and shit a lot. Like I I, I like my voice out. Mm -hmm. I like my opinion. I like debating with people. I I like responses to my opinion, especially when they're not the same. Like, like, I enjoy discourse about things. Not, not in an aggressive way, but just, I, I enjoy that. So, no, I would never stop this, but, yeah. I would like one day for music to just be my main... You just want to get on stage and Why the fans... I told you. Everybody's doing music behind the scenes. Was you always doing it, even mm -hmm. when you was on Joe's show? Is that how y'all bonded? Probably. But I, I would have never thought that, like... Like, I thought you knew Joe because of your relationship at the labels. Cause no, I, it was um, through uh, Aristotle by any means. Uh, we had met through that when I was working uh, with Kevin Lyles. Okay. Yeah, ne never actual at the label. I was too young with Joe. You were doing label. work at, at, at these places, mm -hmm. and then you met him, and then how did how, you even start potting? What was the idea? Was it his, his idea? Or was y'all there, and y'all was just needed, and y'all just jumped was, on um, and it took off? It was, shout out to Marissa Mendez um, and Peter Rosenberg. They had approached Joe, from my, from my understanding, or Joe had approached Marissa. I, I can't remember the exact details there. I, all I'm saying is I'm taking myself out of that point. Um, the three of them had met and talked about the idea. Before then, um, not his manager now, but I, I believe Corey is still like in the background of the pods now, like laughing or something. Um, that was a shot. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, still, I don't understand what I did to Corey. Um, sometimes I get emotional. I Fuck think you're shit. very tactical. You have great tactics. I, I caught it when he was a shot, he's but a, he's I just a, let he's it go. He's in the background laughing or something. I caught it, but I'm just like, I'm just. I'm just <laughs> um, no, nah, shout out to Corey. Uh, Corey yeah, and right. I had, had definitely talked about Joe's personality at, the, at that time. That was already like a thing. And, and again, I showed up late. Like I know Corey probably had already talked to Joe about that. Um, and I had already had a relationship with Rosenberg. So I came in to produce the podcast on episode one. Like you can hear on the first, I mean, the in, entire RSS feed is in my email to this day. Um, like their whole podcast. But yeah, it was just something that I thought Joe would have been great at, but I didn't need I didn't need to tell Joe that. Like Joe was a fucking gift of gab. He was on Hot 97. Like mm -hmm. I would never take credit for any of that shit at all. But from episode one, I produced it. And then by episode seven or whatever the fuck it was, he asked me to come in because 
after like the Marissa back and forth with like host stories, which were great. I'm not putting Marissa just in no, the no, no, host stories. Le- oh yeah. No, they were legendary, and I'm not putting legendary Marissa in that shit, box. Bro. Marissa now is uh, published books. Like she's doing great. Mm-hmm. I don't want to put Marissa in that box that she was just on some host story shit. But seven episodes in, that's what the fuck it was. So he was like, "Yo, can you sit here? Cause I can't, like, I can't talk about other shit with her. Like, I need somebody to to combat with on other stuff." That so I Maul talk about. wasn't up there yet. Nah, he came nah, later Maul, on. Maul was in um, Maul was in Detroit, I believe, at that time. Um, and then when Marissa left, Maul, I think BJ had just gotten traded to the Knicks, and Maul was back. And I knew Maul outside of Joe, just like on some Palooza Harlem shit, just seeing him around. And I thought Maul was hilarious. So Joe and I were like, "Do we need a, another girl? Like maybe Maul's the the one." And this was like around episode 50, 60, 70, somewhere in that range. So you was up there from seven to 50 something and then I was, more no, came No, on? episode one. No, but I'm saying when you got on, when you got- Episode you seven. Yeah, you probably episode, episode seven. seven so, so, you, so you got up to 50 something and then Maul joined. Yeah. Some, so you and Maul got started fucking around from the show, really? From being on the show together? Yeah, yeah, for, yeah for sure. I mean, I, I knew Maul just around. Just I, around, yeah, like yeah, you said, I, but, I y'all, but y'all locked in after being on the show because mm-hmm. I thought that y'all knew each other and all that other stuff prior. No, not like that. Okay. No, so, definitely. So that even makes me feel even more astonished about the bond that y'all built, being that y'all wasn't even, y'all didn't come in together, y'all, y'all got there, and then y'all built a bond after working together. But there's, I mean, there's, there's already a bond, and podcasting was so new at that point. Like, we put in three years together bonding for a whole new experience and trying to grow something. Like, Wait. I don't care, I don't give a fuck who you meet at that time. I have a bond with Savon, who was the intern at that time. Erickson, who was the camera guy. Like, there's bonds at parks. Even if we don't see eye to eye at this point, like, there's a bond with people that you didn't even meet that a different version of in the trenches with could be. Like, this was uncharted territory at that point. We, we were kicking in the door at that time. Were y'all getting that's, paid? That's, was he paying y'all back then or did y'all? Yeah, no, we, we, so, we so were being he, paid. So he was paying y'all from, from Jump Street or was the money coming from somewhere No, the else? first time anyone made any money was a Spotify deal. Oh, okay. So y'all was just rocking and rocking and rocking and then, and then the money came. Yeah, we did, uh, shit, 2015 it started. I don't think the Spotify deal came till 2018. Okay. 2017, somewhere around there. Two or three years. All right. So y'all was just buying, oh, yeah, y'all yeah. was just going for it then. Spending every dollar I fucking had. I was leaving work. I was my lunch break. I was shooting up to 54th Street, taking the train right back down. Like, yeah. So that's why it went, when when everything kind of went awry. Now I understand more why. The, the why, emotions. The emo- no. Yeah, but, and, but, and every but, every but, expense. Uh, like, we talked about like cameras yeah. and all that shit and like all production. Like that was everything Maul and I stood by. We stood behind those expenses. So yeah, of course we felt a way about a lot of stuff. Like, no, we here to, we're here to stand behind it. We're not saying we not. Let me know what we stand behind. Very simple. I know it's been manipulated and changed. That's it's a very true. simple sentence. Hey, we're here to stand behind anything. I haven't complained about a single bit of profit. I do not give a fuck. I told y'all, hold my money. I don't even need it. Let's pay everybody else. But just tell me what's going on because it's in our contract. Very simple. Like this whole ordeal has gotten blown out of proportion. It's, kind of, it's like over now. Like It's, it's been over, yeah. That's why I didn't even really care to, to talk about it. Yeah, but, but it, it seems like that because y'all are still very popular and Joe is very popular, and I don't even think that the show that we was on prior even reached the levels that y'all reached and people are still talking about it because it's a big deal mm. based upon chemistry. And I think that the idea or the fact that y'all are still going and still being successful on both ends is why people still will, will wonder because people want to know the source and how these things are getting done and how you're able to move forward and make money and keep shining. And it's a lot of people that's not able to do that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I think it's it's going to last because of that fact. Because now podcasting and YouTubers, like, we're the new rappers. When I first came into this, I, I was personally told by a legend to say, and her partner to say, you got to market yourself like an upcoming rapper if mm. you're going to do this thing here. That's how you got to do it. 
So when so when I took that advice and I, I did that, I realized all the different things that rappers do. And I told him, I said, rappers sell clothes, rappers endorse products, rappers smoke weed, rappers work out. You know what I'm saying? That, that it's fully about marketing. I don't think people market yeah. themselves as YouTubers and podcasters like they should. And I think y'all have great marketing. I appreciate that. Yeah, from even the y'all have the most legendary drop. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah, it's fine. My cousin's son, he's old as shit now. It's crazy to me. So that means when it says, you Joe Button, that's still your cousin's? No. I, oh. uh, don't quote me, and, and I'm not even trying to get in his business. I think that's Joe's ex's son, I think. Okay. So then it was merged, and it was your nephew, you said. So my cousin's son, Asher, was, that does, yeah, yeah, does, does more on us. Okay. And Asher's like in elementary school now, which is... Crazy to me. That's how long we've been potting. Like he was a, a baby at that point, and now he's literally running around. This fuck's like this tall. <laughs> <laughs> like it just—it's crazy to see the time fly by. It don't even seem like all the, that amount of years went through. Yeah, 2015. So what's it like being a new father? Craziest experience. Fatherhood. In my life. Everything we're talking about does not even compare to that mm. entire thing. Like. It's the most overwhelming shit I've ever had to deal with. Like, it's the one thing that I have, like, I'm tough talking about because I'm still trying to, like, handle it. And, like, we have no nannies, no, like, help, no nothing. Like, we are every day with her, which is what we wanted to do. And, bro, that shit is... I'm not gonna be the parent that's gonna sit here and be like, it's the greatest fucking thing. It's the most beautiful thing that's ever entered my entire life. But man, that shit is fucking hard. Hard work. Like raising kids, like raising kids for real is tough. That shit is really fucking tough. What's the greatest thing you got out of it? So far, so far. Um, perspective of life, like. Watching my daughter observe the world takes away my pressures and ideas of the world. Like everything that we just talked about with pressures of AdSense, of everything, like watching my daughter just look and observe what the fuck is happening makes me think a lot of this shit don't matter. And that actually eases my anxiety. Wow. Like a lot. Like, all right, this shit doesn't matter as much as we think it does. Like I'm losing my fucking mind and not realizing what should be the purpose of what we're doing. I don't know if that was corny. I don't, like I'm I'm nah, still trying to figure this shit that's out. That's authentic, man. I'm so I'm so like, bad at the I'm daughter thing. Yeah. Like they're like, oh dandelions. And they'll be fixated on that for an hour. The one yeah, it just it's just like it's so hard to explain. Just watching her look at the world. I'm like, why am I sitting here? fucking losing my mind over some bullshit. And of course it is important of what we're doing, but But wait till she it... start talking. Oh yeah. And wait till she get older and teenager, like how my daughter's 20. Mm. So wait till she get to 15 and 13 and she start having her own mind. And oh you yeah, gonna, she's and gonna, gonna curse be, me out. I can't you wait. know, and you're gonna be in your mind, this fucking little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and I done fucking I didn't carry you, and I didn't sacrifice, and I didn't have, I got anxiety for your funky ass. And you gonna tell me this is your fucking life, and you're gonna do what the fuck you wanna do with it? That's crazy. That's when it becomes fucking crazy, bro. That's I'm, what I'm saying. I'm excited to like get to know my daughter. Yeah. I've never had to get to know somebody from. But you know what they from say. From like even like, I, I'm an only child, but like my cousins have had kids. Ex I've never really got to know somebody from birth, like for real. I'm, it's funny. I'm just you, curious you, to see how it's gonna be. You, Esso, and Ghost, first child girl or only child girl. Yeah, I only got one. You know what? They, I, I, this has always been true. If the first is a girl or you have more girls than boys, it's because y'all was going crazy in the streets. That's I don't, what I don't I know if I heard. Mean, what? Yeah. That heard, shit is true. I heard if you had a girl and I'm well, not that taking, means I'm not only, taking nothing I know how to take from, care of women. I'm not. That, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you they, didn't go crazy in the streets back in the day. What if the woman went crazy? Nah, but no, the no, girl, it's the guy. I, I, I was told that if you had a girl, I would, I would, women's pussy wasn't that good. You did nut hard enough. That's what they said. Wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, that, no, 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 no. Enough of this podcast, though. Break that down to me, please. Please break that down to me. That's, that's what was told to me when I was good. If she got a girl, that pussy not that good. All these women that's walking around with boys, them is the one with the pussy. It's hard to make a boy. That's the good pussy. That's what niggas told me. That's a fact. That sounds like some West Indian holla shit right there. <laughs> It ain't what's in it, it just sounds Jamaica Queen shit. <laughs> that's that's it, know, it, just sounds, it just sounds Jamaica Queen shit. That's what told me, yo, if you got a girl. Let me tell you something. When I worked at um, um, Port Authority, all the dudes that was getting all the girls, they either had a lot of daughters or their firstborn was a girl. Okay. Like, there was really wild. Hey, bitch, I know they got that fire, fire. Got a boy. No, I don't disagree with you. Every girl I know that got the fire, fire. I don't know if, listen, if I fucked listen, them. I only know about my travels. I don't know if that's they true. They got a boy. Rory, from the Twitter days, I saw all the thoughts thrown at you. He I, got a I had girl. a run. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not talking I had a about run. now. I'm talking about back then. He had a run. My, girl, my girl is aware of that. My, my that jersey is hanging in the rafters. He, same I, I was here. there. Yeah, my jersey's in the same room. here. And y'all, all your first is girl, girl, and girl. But I, man, okay, I'm, but my my I'm dad, stick to my, the dad my dad I'm was the biggest the hoe. My dad was the biggest hoe ever. And had boys? No, he, he had only boys. had me. Well, you know why? You know, know why? He may have another one, but uh, then he ran into some good. <laughs> he ran into some good. Pussy. <laughs> he ran into some good pussy. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So you're trying to say my mom has I'm good pussy? To tell you, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> and so is my mom. So is my mom. <laughs> My mom good pussy too. Yes. That's what I mean. My mom had more Fuck boys than girls. About. That's, that's good pussy too. <laughs> you'll thank you thank your mama. You know what I'm uh, saying? All right. I wanted a girl first though. How did y'all feel? I didn't want a girl. I wanted a boy. I wanted a girl first. I didn't want no boy. No. I they wanted, usually say the girl's more like the father than the I boy. I wanted a boy first, and that's why my baby mother named my daughter after me. I wanted some <laughs> type of like pause, like tenderness into parenting because I felt like if I had a boy like off my first lesson of being a parent I would have been a dickhead to yeah. to my son wanted, and like I want to ease into parenting because really? I know with a I girl a and this may be and... sexist and fucked up but I'm just being honest at how I think I think with a daughter I would have eased into parenting with more of a loving perspective than I would have I... with a son where I would have Probably been an asshole to him, and I didn't want that. Nah. Now I think if I have a son, I have you'll a, be ready. Yeah, because I, I don't want to be a dickhead to my son the way I was that's treated. So weird that you, oh, because you were treated like that. You think I was raised by an Irish father? Like that's just how it, it don't that's get just, no rugged. Like, than yeah, okay. See, I and, didn't, and I, I didn't. Look at I don't want to like treat that. my son that way. And I think just being a little softer going into the the daughter thing. Because come on, like it's your daughter. You can't. Be a dick to you. I actually wanted to have a son because I played ball. I wanted I wanted an athlete and all that type of stuff. But I'm, I'm gonna keep it so I'm gonna keep it totally real. I did want a boy, but after my daughter came out and you saw her, I needed a girl. You know what I'm saying? Like that's when I I realized that I did need a girl. I love to hear my daughter say, "Daddy, daddy, daddy." Yeah. It was just it was a totally different thing. It was a combination. Not that a boy wouldn't have calmed me because I still would have. Loved, loved my son. It, For sure. The, the, the love wouldn't have been in any different because I don't come from a family that they're treating the boys so much rougher than they're treating the girls. I, I don't come from that. But at that time, to calm myself down, the daughter was what was going to calm me down because my son, I, I would have been on some shit. Like, he could see what the fuck ever. I don't care. He's coming with me. Like, yeah. I, like you know what I'm saying? But my daughter was on some shit like... This is my little princess. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Are you okay? I had to deal with her gently, just washing a daughter. I remember when I had to wash my daughter for the first time. It was mind blowing because the only vaginas I seen was shit you was attacking, trying to bust <laughs> down. You know what I'm saying? So when you see the little vagina, you gotta wash that thing tender and. I appreciate and you saying this, especially in this PC community. Like, oh, no, it was crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. But crazy. you're not allowed to say. But you're, you're right. To say that something shit, like that? You fine. Oh, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, Typically, that. that yo, was one of my favorite Louis C.K. jokes is like, yo, I never thought in my life I'd be wiping poop out of a vagina. Yes. <laughs> That's wow. And, like, like, and you're you like, 
you're just so gentle, oh, oh baby, and everything, and you putting the baby in the tub. I, I still remember when my daughter came. You never saw you never water. saw a vagina that you would never sexualize. Yeah, is what you said. Like yes. it's it's a yeah. Yes. It's crazy. It was it was and, and and it was automatically that your brain would never it was sexualize. Automatic. It was the most precious gift now. Yeah. So now you, I gotta treat this delicate because she's supposed to bring in life, too. So I gotta treat this a little bit differently than I treat a boy who's, he's not bringing, he's giving the life, but he's not carrying the life and bringing the life in. So I feel like shout out to my daughter, little Randy, even if everything isn't correct in my life right now, I still love my daughter 110%. She changed me. She was my good luck charm. She used to call me when I'm driving down the road with Clue doing up and downs the same night and my daughter would talk me back for three hours. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't, you don't get that from an outside source, you get that from a kid and from family love. Yeah, I'm gonna steal his answer. It yeah. just changes your whole perspective of how you. That's view, a great answer. View what do you human think of, beings. What do you think about the Diddy rollout? What's the rollout? Oh, the whole whoever's doing rollout? that, the that whole no, Rory. Homeland Security is doing a rollout. Oh, that's whoever's running that play. It's an incredible rollout. Think about it. Every three days, it's something more ridiculous than the next. And we we understand what is a rollout for an artist doing media. Don't you think it's just so ridiculous? Whether he did it or not, it's every 40 hours. It's some new shit. But as opposed to what? Everything's every 40 hours. No, but just for one subject matter, though. Yes, yeah, it's, it's Puff. He's yeah, one no, of the bro. biggest icons of our One of the biggest stars existence. in the entire world. No, I, I, don't, I don't disagree, but the rollout is one of the most but aggressive. But what, what are we rolling out? Any negative thing he's done in the but who, past. But who's rolling out? The government is rolling out? You're that we don't to, know. To lock him up? Nobody's paying attention to Trump right now, so they're trying to put all the focus. No, nah, everyone's paying attention to Trump right now. Not, re not really, though. Not as much as they pay attention to Diddy. I disagree wholeheartedly there. I think way more people are paying attention to Trump than Puff Daddy. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, so who's who's dominating the new cycle? I know Trump my father is older. He don't give a damn about Puff Daddy. It's he the, only gives about Trump. But the new Trump. cycle is now twenty four hours since fucking I don't know nine eleven. I guess yeah. new cycle is twenty four hours. They're gonna find shit to fill. Puffy been in that now, motherfucker for three months. And now Puff, yo, is, his rollout is nonstop. You would have thought, why, but why would it not be? I, Rory, I'm not. I'm not no, saying what's true or what's not true. But but, but I've, made, I've I've said my piece on my own podcast about course, how okay. I feel about Puff mm -hmm. and that entire thing. But why would he not be the news cycle? The way they treat anything. We've seen people. We've stayed, they have Eric Adams in the shit for 24 hours. You don't think Puff Daddy is going to be? No, no. I don't disagree. When Homeland Security raids Miami, LA, like, no, but he's going to be the news Before Homeland, it was a whole bunch of stuff. As before. it should have been. I, I got you. But even with Eric Adams, Eric Adams got a lot of shit on his jacket that it could keep rolling so out. So does Puff. No, but, but it's like, yo, every day I feel like he's dropping a new single. Puff too. No, I'm talking about Puff. He did, the, he did the Cassie first single. Oh, yeah, that was a great record. Yeah, that did. was out the... That, oh, was, that, that was I Get Money. That Di went crazy. Yes, Diageo. That was then, a warm-up mix. Then the little Rod shit. Uh, and then Homeland Security. This motherfucker has the greatest rollout ever. This is the classic album at this point. Yeah. You don't think people are going to talk about it? Man... I forget. It was, it was the Pac shit before that. The Pac shit? That's another mixtape? It's Puff. He's been in the news for 30 years. So how much longer do you think they're going to keep having this rollout going, Roy? What I'm trying what, to figure out... But what's out, the end goal? What I'm trying to figure That's out is... That's a good question. Why what's is good? nobody even paying attention to the fact who the fuck gets raided by Homeland Security and nobody goes to jail? What the fuck are we talking about right now? Nobody went to jail. The son, the, the two sons got taken to the jail, got released the same day. I don't even think they went to jail. I don't even think they went to jail neither. They on the grand popping shit, talking about stop the cap. They throwing gang you signs know up. It's wild I'm gonna tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. When I used to do like really criminal fucked up shit, they said the best way to get away with something is to do it in front of the public's face because they'll never believe it's happening. I'll tell you, you're black. You're black motherfucker. But, but, he did it. No, what I'm saying is, <laughs> whatever they're doing in the public to show it out is because they don't, there's something behind the scenes that there is it's misdirection. No, you, everybody's saying there was a dude, there's something happened that some dude raped some kids and did some old wild shit out west, and that was supposed to be in the news cycle. And as soon as that happened, it was in the news for a, a, a day or so, and then Puffy came along. Like I'm, it's so many, it's so many CO conspiracies that's rolling around right now. I'm I'm on the side of believing what Cassie said in that entire thing. I don't think Cassie was 
gas and shit. Everything after that, I don't know. I'll Why you it. don't think Cassie was gassing it? I don't think Cassie has a reason to gas it. Money? You think Cassie? She's, she's did... with somebody with money. I heard. Wasn't he a trainer? I didn't know he had money. I thought he didn't have no money. But Rory, thirty million is still thirty. Come million. on, thirty million. I don't think he had thirty. He ain't got thirty million. Now, if he Rory. does, I apologize for. Now, if I'm sitting up there with have, Cassie, I could have, I could have five hundred million. If somebody says those things about me, I'm not settling. But he didn't settle. The, the company, he see, did. see, the company settled. He didn't settle. The companies had the rights over him, and the companies. See, this is why I said it's a lot of propaganda. What company is settled? The insurance companies, the, what the, they were saying. The, the companies that was named in, in the, the document, loss. they settled fast, right? This is a whole thing. This is a whole conspiracy theory, right? Diageo gets spoken out about, I'm taking my liquor company. My liquor company is going to be all black now. Diageo is fucking racist, right? Ever since then, they said Diageo Roll out. helped help Cassie. This is what they said. I'm just, I'm just telling you. Diageo Who helped- Who do you think Diageo is? The CIA? No, you Diageo is the mob. They saying the Diageo help. This is what I'm talking about. You're you putting way too much into Diageo. Yo, you no, are, no, no. I worked not. with Diageo. Come on, Rory. I'm a conspiracy theorist saying I'm putting too much I'm into I'm a big Diageo. conspiracy theorist. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Some, hold on. Sometimes, hold on. Pe sometimes hey, people are I'm nasty. A, no, I'm a dentist. Sometimes people are nasty. It's a liquor company. You no, I'm a dentist. This whole thing. Stop that. Stop that. Sure. Hold on, hold on. Hennessy hated on you. Yeah. yeah. And you think the Diageo won't hate on Puff? Quite the opposite, because I wasn't you. doing nasty shit. <laughs> but I wasn't working with them. It don't matter. They still hate it on you. Yeah, that was because they didn't want to work know. with black people. I don't know how the lead conspiracy theorists are going to be like, what are you talking about? The, the mob and liquor? What are you talking about? The mob What mob? Gangsters run out No, 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 no. I'm telling you. I am. Where's the tinfoil? Put it on my head. <laughs> I am that guy. But I'm one of the most objective conspiracy theorists ever. Do I think Diageo is running the fucking world? God no. They're not even the top liquor seller. They was when Puffy was you selling think, Ciroc. You, they was when Puffy was <laughs> selling <laughs> Ciroc. Rory's going happen. They was, they was the lead niggas when Puffy was selling that Ciroc out. Let's, for, let's, not, let's not forget that. He took a, 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 a trash vodka and took it to number one. Let's not forget that. And, but, and the only people to slow down their run was when you guys was doing y'all palooza. And think about think this. About, that, 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 we did not slow down their run in that regard. I'm not right. taking... No, we didn't. Yes, y'all did. <laughs> Culturally, did. we did. But to them, culture don't mean shit. It and their numbers don't mean shit. Don't mean shit. Numbers mm. do. Numbers. They and that's what I'm saying. Culture. Diageo, especially with Ciroc. Granted, Puff definitely took... Ciroc had been around forever. Yes. And was it... And nobody Puff, made, Puff made it. that company a, a billion dollars. For sure. Without I question. I'm not saying otherwise. Diageo, what do they own? Fucking Guinness? Like, they were not... Puff is... They're not going to go out the window for Puff. The powers that be? Why won't they squash motherfuckers, squash motherfuckers for less? Yeah. Rory, this shit is fucking what? You said this, you said that. Go fucking... Even Hove got quiet talking about the Duce shit. Remember, he was making all that Duce noise. Mm -mm. Mad Duce noise. Okay, the nigga, so, the nigga let me, started let me, try, let me try to get this... Correct. All right. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so Puff had a disagreement with Diageo. Diageo ownership is, is in PepsiCo, too. Okay, cool. So Pepsi. <laughs> what are we talking about? Pepsi. This is the year that made it. They are running the world. Now you just found out. They are running the fucking world. <laughs> they run world. KFC, They're not bro. just running the liquor. They're running the beverage world. They didn't even kill their op Coca-Cola. What are you talking about? They can't because Coca-Cola <laughs> got money. <laughs> they, they can't even they deal with their direct stable. op. You think they can deal with the they world? Stay, but that's like China and the U.S., motherfucker. One ain't going to kill the other. They right. just going to be it's at the top of the food So you're trying chain. to tell me. Mm-hmm. You Out didn't know game. Pepsi now. Be honest. You didn't know Pepsi had We didn't know that neither. No, I, I didn't. That's no, what I'm trying to say. It's fine. You used to work for Pepsi. You go over there. It's the farthest thing. Oh, but what you about to say, bro? 24 different brands. Yeah, Diageo. Yeah, they got 24. I work with Diageo. They, they get everybody. Oh, you work. But they don't fucking <laughs> control the world. No, you're not saying right. that. That's it's not like Puff was partnering with J.P. Morgan. At that point, I'd be like, all right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who do they? I, j I bank with JP Morgan. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody, that whole boat that, that came on the shore with all the coke that was a, a JP Morgan boat. How much you said? $23.5 billion in just 2023. I'm not putting that in, in JP Morgan. So, Puff, who brought in maybe a billion, which is crazy, they are going to do 
a Homeland Security raid because Puff quiet, very quiet, very, very quietly was like, yo, I don't really fuck with D.I.J. He didn't do that quietly. Yes, he did. He did not. He was making announcements and shit. Did the Homeland Security Ask one person like, on the street yo, if they knew Puff yo, had an issue with D.I.J. You want 30 million? Go talk about this. I got, we got your back. Don't worry about it. What, mm. do that. It's just that simple, yeah. Yeah. What do, you, I, I, what do you think Puff was gonna expose with Diageo that they would get Homeland Security? Look what they just hold on, he look what they've been exposing with did, no, Rory, we're all in this music industry and we when I'm we not talk, in the music No, hold on. When we talk, we only give 10% of what we really see. The shit you've seen by yourself. Let's not put mall in this, nobody else. By yourself could cripple a nation. Yes or no? So think about a person like Puff. He probably has fucking hard drives they, of niggas on they video. They claim that they went inside his crib to get the hard drive. To get the, he had a lot of video incriminating shit of my, a lot my, of people. My tinfoil hat is the raid was to protect people, not yeah. to not incriminate to do, Puff. Yeah, yeah, the, I agree. No, I know. I, to, I totally agree so, with that. But so that, that whole Diageo the, the, trying to the raid, the check raid Puff is, is different. I think opposite. I think they went in there to protect there are other people. I've been a Puff. I've admittedly been to Puff's crib. I know who I saw there. He had cameras everywhere. I think they went to raid to protect. <laughs> that's my tinfoil hat. It ain't. I don't disagree. That's on why that I'm, that's that why I'm looking at this Diageo shit, bro. Y'all think Diageo is is getting Homeland Security to raid some shit to jam Puff up? Come on. Why not? Or, if that's or not me, might... I want to take Rory and this motherfucker's with Homeland Security, mm. and I got money. And he's in the house, yo, bro. Are you gonna do it? Of course he's gonna do it. And, Kill and, bro, and, read and this nigga. And Lord forbid Fuck the, the red tape. Lord forbid the whole land security dude is crooked. All right, cool. Yeah, we you, you go about, confiscate every, some what cars. What you mean, God forbid? Did we talking about the U.S. government? Yeah. Everybody's fucking crooked. Stop. Listen, when the cops stopped I agree us, there? we thought they took our weed, and I and they, they left the weed, and we was like, if that was us, bro, we would have took the weed. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. That was a cop. I'm taking the weed. I'm taking the weed. Uh, definitely. I'm not leaving this with you. No. Nah. But they but they left the weed. They They're was good, good guys. They was good well, guys. That's because fentanyl is crazy. You never know what the weed you're gonna take. That's true. <laughs> the cops don't cops don't smoke the weed that they used to confiscate the way they used to. That's a fair point. Which <laughs> I have I have police friends. I, I know. No, no, I got police <laughs> friends too. Yeah, he got he got so he got DEA friends. Cause they stopped That's us a for speeding. Level. They stopped us for speeding. Had the weed in the I car. Cop, I have cop friends that grew up in like Ridgewood. Those cops. They yeah, I got, I, got, I got the regular cops too. I got the car. The car. <laughs> the car that they try not to respect. Yeah. Hey, yo, oh, no, they respect like this car right here. <laughs> he got the DEA shit. Oh, that's, right. that's why. This is regular. Oh, so you set Puff up? Oh yeah, the DEA. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Oh, this shit really is DEA. I thought yeah. it was NYPD. It's DEA. What are you talking oh, about? Yeah. I saw it when you gave it to him. <laughs> no wonder they let us go with the drugs. <laughs> DEA. It's legal. Because the fentanyl is in it. There was no drugs. It was only legal uh, marijuana. Yeah, it was only legal marijuana. I really didn't know it was a DEA I'm, badge. I'm curious to see where this puff shit ends up. It's I'm with y'all with out. all the conspiracies, but I, I'm, I'm curious I, to see what happens. I think it's just going to fizzle out. Just fizzle out. People are gonna forget, and somebody else is gonna be Niggas the new ain't subject. Gonna forget. Motherfuckers are suing. They want that. Cassie opened that thirty million dollar door, and motherfuckers is trying to walk through. Okay, they trying to get paid. They people are wishing and dreaming. Yo, he raped me in my dream. <laughs> yo, I, no, yo. I, I I think that happened. Even when the little rod shit came out on our pod, I, I said initially like I've seen paperwork. This don't look like real paperwork. This looks like bullshit. That whole Meek mm. Mill. Shit like a uh, redacted star. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's someone that dated Nicki. I was like, this ain't real. Mm -hmm, this is bullshit. This mm -hmm. is fake. Of course, I think that's gonna happen. But I don't think Homeland Security, even though I think the government tries to do these licks to get attention on them, that's how people get promotions. I think yep. that's what's happening to Thug right now. Is prosecutors trying to get the foot in the door to make sure they'll end up being in politics. I know that happened. I've been said that. That's what but I also, did. yeah, of course. Yes, it's the same thing. But I just don't, I can't see Homeland Security raiding Puff's crib for the fuck of it. That's all. I, I just think that people need to pay attention because everybody in our community, the hip hop community, is always at a rush to judgment. I'm not saying Puffy's clean, I'm not saying Puffy's dirty. What I'm saying is that I tell everybody if I know him and been around him and partied and did things that I don't know, Y'all motherfuckers as the critics, y'all don't know. Y'all was not even there. You can say I've been to the house, I've been to camera. They can't even say I that. I didn't see anything there. Yeah, that's no, what I'm what saying. You, saying. you have a, a perspective that's beyond. That's beyond these people that are just looking and watching. 
And there, and, no. and there are people that are like, yo, we're tired of the flossing. We're tired of this. And I'm like, well, go get you some money so you can go floss yourself. Yeah. Like, why would you get tired of a, what another man's working hard for and likes to but do? also, he may be doing some nasty shit. Like, we also need to have that. He could that. be. He could we don't be. disagree on that. No, no, I'm not saying that he's not. All I'm saying is this. These other I watched, people. I watched y'all generation above me protect Kells for so long. I never protected Kells. I'm not saying, no, I'm no, saying we, anyone individual no, listen, in this room. Listen, I watch y'all protect I'm Kells. Say this, I'm, and I'm saying my generation, we have some questions. Yo, yo, yo listen, I, I, I'm going to say this wholeheartedly about the R. Kelly shit. Niggas, people wasn't protecting him. We didn't even know. There wasn't social media. There wasn't no way to, to get these like type of things. No, bro. <laughs> These I'm not saying got, it was your job no, to no, fucking stop it. No, no. <laughs> this is what I, you. <laughs> no, no. This is what I'm telling I'm y'all. I'm not telling y'all it was y'all job, this but y'all knew. I was 14 and it was like... Everybody knew about Leah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Aaliyah. Everybody knew about Leah, but you know what the standpoint was? Her parents know. Her uncle, Barry Hankerson. They knew. They were there. So if, if, if mommy and daddy and Barry and the uncle and the family knows, what the fuck is somebody else going to say? That's her family. And I'm not saying that's a bad <laughs> perspective. And in hindsight, I wouldn't even know what I would have done in, in that situation either. If I were of age working the business when R. Kelly was running around with Aaliyah, I'm never going to be that person where like, I would have spoke up. I don't know if I would have. I have no idea. That's understandable. But I think people need to take some like reflection with that shit and realize what's happening now and just look into what's going on. That's all. Because mm, everyone like let that shit rock. Like, uh, uh, Kelly is a, like, you got Elvis Presley who had his wife at 14. Like, this ain't, this ain't. Oh, I'm holding everyone to those standards, no, but too. but listen, but I got you, but there's a lot of white people who have done the same thing. They not in jail. Uh, oh, I, they, not, they haven't been. Probably worse. They haven't <laughs> been ridiculed. They haven't been nothing. And they're doing it, like you said, right in front of motherfuckers' face. And I'm not saying R. Kelly was, I'm not, I don't know. But what I can say for this is, at the beginning, nobody knew about this 17-year-old and this 19-year-old. It was niggas that I guess was around him that was privy to know about that. But us in the music business, didn't know, yeah. yeah, we didn't know nothing about that. The only same thing that we knew- Just heard, just yeah, heard shit. Yeah, and you the ain't... only thing, we heard things, we heard rumblings, but the only thing that we knew the was Aaliyah. Aaliyah. That's, the, that's the only thing that we knew. And it didn't even last that long for it to even- Trickle over. How long was he with Aaliyah? But it doesn't matter. He married her and she was 15. Child. Yeah, no, she was a child. I understand. That's what, what I'm that's saying. What we knew. When, when, it, when it's a blip, it can be forgotten about way quicker. Some, think about all the shit we forget about. And then, like, when um, Uncle Murder does the year wrap up and he starts talking about shit, I'm like, oh, we forgot that happened. We forgot that happened. Same year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not excusing what he did, mm -hmm. but. When shit happens really in a short amount of time, it can get passed over quickly. And I don't think that people really understand the effects of social media. Yeah, it's I don't in think your people, face I don't think the people day. understand, because even when y'all was potting, say 2010, that was the beginning of social media. We're talking about 03. Oh, yeah. There was Wait nothing. They were, they were, I know for a fact, there were, uh, were write-ups written in Ebony and different magazines that when people found out, Labels was paying motherfuckers to take the shit out the magazine. Mm -hmm. Millions, okay, millions. I know, I, I know this for a fact. So that's how they hit it. And then if somebody like me told it, you know how many different stories I told, and people was looking at me like, liar. Come on, bro. This doesn't and really happen. No, I it guess happens that's kind of to my point. Like, I'm not judging anyone from that era because mm -hmm. again, I don't know how I would have handled that shit. If I was working in the business and somebody told me that shit, I'm trying to keep a job. I'm, I'm not judging anybody. I may have reacted the exact same way. But now that we have this information, we should move accordingly because things are different now. And I think that's the best part of progress. What would be accordingly to you? We should look into rumors that are valid. Uh -huh. Rumors that are valid. That's what I'm saying. We know he dated Aaliyah. That's, that's not a rumor. We knew that. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't our business. And that's cool. Mm -hmm. But maybe some of the things we hear, we should look into and move accordingly. And I'm not saying make it our business, but move accordingly. That's really all I'm saying. Because I'm, I'm definitely not being one of them, even though I'm not Gen Z, but <laughs> the millennials that like look back at that shit like, oh, I would have been the person that would have stood up and been like, stop it, R. Kelly. Like, no, nah, I would have never been that person. I know yeah. I wouldn't have been that person. Yeah, that's cap when they say that. 100% cap.
Definitely. But now that we have this and like we do have the ability to reflect and look at shit, yeah, maybe we should look at this music business now and when we hear things that are valid, really move accordingly. That's all. With spring break right around the corner, you know you got to keep the boys downstairs fresh and clean. Ooh, we getting ready for the pool season. Because you know when them ladies coming up on you, you want to make sure you fresh and clean. So fresh and so clean. And just for that, Manscaped has definitely designed the 5.0 mower for all your grooming needs. Ooh, man. And we on our way to Mexico. What perfect timing to get this joint really effective. You got to have that you got to have that thing fresh and trim and you got to keep it you got to keep it right. Go to manscape.com and join the revolution and then hit the promo code bagfield. When you go to manscape.com, you hit the promo code, you're going to get 20% off. And you make sure you do it before you go to Mexico, you go to Cancun, you go to Miami, even ATL because it's going you going to be right and you're going to save some money on the hotel. So we were just talking, and Puffy's new single just dropped today. <laughs> Christian Combs, no, look, I, I, Jasmine I Brand reports, look, <laughs> so, Christian Combs, lawyer, a victim of accusing of accusing Diddy's son of sexual assault and drugging her, says we have pics of my client's I- I- injuries. Okay. And <laughs> and now this is the early today is reported that Christian Combs is being named in a looming lawsuit accusing the rap star of sexually assaulting and drugging a woman. And of course, they got his daddy's picture in there. So this, it got, it's, everything is a part of single. This is a, it's, it's a compilation album now. This rollout is, this This reminds me of when DMX album. dropped his two albums in one year and he had all the Homeland things. Security, it reminds you of these two albums? <laughs> yeah. I, what I think is happening that's behind this whole thing and we can move on to Yeah, we're gonna move this, forward with this. Is they're trying to break him. Right? I agree. And the easiest and the fastest way to break anybody is to involve lawyers and put lawsuits on you. I, I guess back to our conversation of reflecting, is there a world where maybe this individual that we love may have just been doing some fucked up shit? And this is karma? And, he would, and I'm not saying that he's not being targeted, but what happens when you're very vulnerable to be targeted? I'm not saying they wasn't trying to target Puff. Puff is very important, mm-hmm. and he is a threat as far as the whole structure. Because I respect Puff as far as a businessman. Yeah. But where do we draw the line to excuse everything that maybe is really happening? Mm-hmm. I finish your because thought. you're vulnerable, Puff. You've been doing this wild shit, and it's years. very fucking easy to have Homeland Security come in because you're doing the things we're accusing you of. But it could be under the agenda of how valuable you are to a whole community. Let, let me say this. And to disrupting what we're trying to do here. I agree with everything you're saying. And Puff is the perfect example. I also think this is a social experiment on top of him being guilty. And if this works, it can work for people who have done less than Puff. And the reason why I say this, Esso and I were on our way to a meeting and you know that they're, the record labels are trying to get rid of TikTok. Mm-hmm. Well, Universal in particular. Well, they're leading, they're leading the charge. They're, but we also Warner, heard- Warner signed, but, uh, Sony signed. Yeah, we also heard that that might not go down. Okay. Because of people who are just as powerful as Puff that are trying to sway the pendulum. And they're thinking about it. And the artist is swaying the pendulum saying, like how you said, we can go a little deeper, how you said Sony signed, right? So there's artists that are looking, there's artists at Universal looking saying, these motherfuckers is beasting off of TikTok, okay? You're not getting my album if you don't solve this shit with TikTok. So now to go back to And, Puff, and th- this artist is major, now go ahead. Yeah, to see how a person can do that and shift the whole economic structure of what Universal wants to make off of TikTok, and now they have to consider that yeah. Seeing how Puff is that powerful and they can get this off, whether he's guilty or not, let's say he's guilty. If we knock out this big horse right here, everyone else is food. Yeah, everybody else is everyone food. Everyone else is food. It doesn't matter. And that's everybody's how food. That's why when I look at the rollout, I don't, whether he's guilty or not, I can. That's I why think, I'm concerned you know, about Ronnie, it. I think he did 60% of that shit. At least 60%. What? This is my You're point being about real Puffy. Nice to bad boy right this now. is my point. <laughs> of, you know what I'm saying? See, so being nice. Look, this is my point about Puffy. 
Everybody has a percentage of what they think he did. Yeah. Nobody fucking knows. That's my problem. Put Everybody's a Vegas going on. Bet on it. Come on, come on. That's okay. Put a Vegas bet on come it. Come on, come on. We know he been doing fuck shit. Come on. Oh. Did you see the fuck shit? Yo, Esso. If Did you, you went, see all right, all right. Let me help you. If we went to Did Las, you see the fuck hold on. If we went to Las Vegas right now. And they said, put a bet over 50 or under 50. Which bet you taking? What, that Puffy's going to fry? No, that Puffy did some of that fuck shit. Is, is it over 50%? I didn't say some no, of no, no, I, I didn't just, say, I'm not, I'm not, I'm telling you like this. Listen, I, I don't, I don't do that. And you know me. I don't do nothing on speculation. As much time as I spent, I've asked people. Now, you know I've been in that circle and I've asked people. Yo, what did you see? Yo, I might have seen some, you know, some questionable gay shit maybe. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's not against the law. <laughs> That's not against the fucking law. It's encouraged I in the law. All right, so, but I'm just saying, the, the, these things that people are saying are being done, some of them are kinky, mm -hmm. some of them are wild. You could be using drugs, niggas use drugs. It's not against the law, though. That's what I'm saying when we talking about against the law. That's the Cassie case. I, we, this shit we like get that. All, we get and, all of that. And, 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 and even with the Cassie case, me and the girl that I know, I discovered Cassie. Okay? We know that. I mm. know I sent her. I did. I sent her home, nigga. I sent her home at a, at a young age. Yo, yo, listen. You know what? We wildin' over here. We popping E. We doing shrooms. We menaging. It's wild over here. You don't need to be here. I'm going to send your ass home, right? And when you turn up age, we're going to send you music. When you turn up age, I'm going to sign you, and you're going to be good. Honorable shit. That, that didn't work for her. She went home, fucked with Ron Leslie. This is where everything gets, everything gets cloudy right here when it comes to me with this situation, right? Because I, I spoke to a girl that told me, oh, I, 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 yo, Cassie, I was there and I seen the bruises. You was? But you can only speak for what Wait, you... Wait, that's what yeah, I said yeah. to her. That's what I said to her. I'm, 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 I'm going to wrap it up. I said, I said, you was there? You was. Why the fuck you didn't say nothing? You know why? Why? No, no, no. That's no, no, listen. That's, so, that's listen. super unfair. To listen. Hold no, on. it's super not. unfair. No, 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 hold on, hold on. Hold I'm on. letting you finish. No, no, let, let me, me hear no, you. Don't, I don't need I'm to hold on. I'm not cutting you off. I want to hear no, you finish. It's no more less fair than you saying niggas should have spoke up about R. Kelly. It's no less fair than that. It's going to the same time. If niggas got to speak up, if people got to speak up on R. Kelly, people who I didn't see it, I didn't know it, we heard rumblings, right? Somebody in the camp. Should have spoke up for her and put something out on Twitter, make a dummy a burner account, and Cassie's getting her ass whooped. She needs help. My, that's a terrible no, rollout. No, no, no. First of all, my, my, my point was very clear. I said, if I was of age during the R. Kelly shit, I'm, I'm not sure I would have spoke up. That's mm -hmm. what I kept saying. I know. I'm saying now it's different. that we have that information, maybe we should reflect in these times and move a little differently. That's what I was saying. That's all I was saying. But how now we with, with, differently? With, I'm, I'm glad that uh -huh. you handled that Cassie situation that way. But to think that somebody else handled it the exact same way you did is unfair to Cassie. If Cassie didn't have that same experience that she had with you, where you were kind to her and said, yo, leave here because we're about to do some fuck shit. We're about to take some ex and fuck bitches and do some whatever shit. Some consensual shit over here. <laughs> but, you too, but you too young... You too young for this shit, <laughs> so leave. So to think that she had that same experience with everybody else is why I'm saying that's unfair. I know she didn't have that experience. I'm an alien when it comes to the music business with shit like that. Nobody would have done that. I was looked at like an asshole. You gonna let that money go and you're not gonna do that? And I looked at it totally different because I had a baby daughter. That was when my daughter was young. But, but to yell about the R. Kelly shit and whatever... People are saying about Cassie, and she like, you don't, you wasn't there. I you handled it correctly. Exactly. But that does not mean that happened that way everywhere else. I don't think. No, listen, mm -hmm. I don't think it happened that I'm way. I'm glad you handled but that how way. I am, That's why I'm cool sitting with you because yeah. I know you operate that. Yeah, way. I operate that way. But everyone doesn't operate that way. I know that, but I'm saying I've been thrusted into situations too where your back where, is against where, where your back is up and you got to make a decision. When it when it was time for me to do things, people talked to me about Puff Daddy. People told me, "Yo, bro, yo, you know, he you might get mixed up into some trouble. You just never know." And I would tell them, "Yeah, yo, listen. Puffy don't I don't have that relationship with him. We got a working relationship. 
We, we party, we blase blah. He doesn't cause me no problems. He's nice to me. I'm a businessman. I don't have those type of problems. But and me listening to them and taking guidance, I did go off on my own. And it cost me, and, and I, as I saw, I said, yo, I, I missed out on, 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 on a whole lot of money. But right now, I'm saying, I missed out on a whole lot of trouble too. Oh, you would have been in the tornado. <laughs> You missed out on a whole lot of trouble. Homeland would have came to your mansion. And my, and my point being is, mm -hmm. Rory, I listened, right? So then when I take it to Cassie, I say, yo, people get blinded by that money. Her frontal lobe wasn't developed. That's a big deal. She was young. She's a baby still, even when she was with Puffy, right? Yeah. Her frontal lobe wasn't developed. She saw all that money, and, and a decision had to be made. And the decision was not made. And I know grown women who have fucked with superstars. They've been diking with dyke bitches. They got money. They've been fucking with the rich dudes. And they had to make a decision because the bitches is coming, putting 30000 on, on on their table. And they doing things for them to help their family that they never seen before. But a decision would have had to be made I'm, to walk the fuck away behalf. on Cassie's behalf because people saying she couldn't, yo, she couldn't walk away because she was scared, but she walked away. She walked away. That's, that's super unfair, bro. She walked away. What are we talking about? When she got, when it got to the point that it's over, that's any woman. Any woman gonna say, yo, the money, the dick, the this, the that. But when they get tired, they walk the fuck away. I think you're speaking because you have been a alpha male in every situation that you've ever been involved in. You've never had to be some type of beta that didn't even know what fucking situation they was trying that's to get a, that, into. That's I'm not even trying point. to make it gender specific. No, no, no. no like somebody, I like the example you like, said it. That's a fair point. You have no idea what it would be like to walk into the lion's den when you think you're dealing with a puppy because that's somebody that's supposed to fuck with you and love you and deal with you. Mm. And then things shift when you're already there and now gotcha. you are the beta. How could you even comment on it as an alpha? And I'm saying you are one that cares about people. Mm -hmm. But there's... Also, alphas that don't. I got you. They, yeah, no. They're going so for the like, dollar. How could you also sit there and be like, Cassie would be like, yeah, it's my time. Like, you don't know what it's like to be in that position. That's fair. That shit is, it could be rough for somebody. Like, that's fair. And, and, and it's just, like I said, if they're going to take out Puff, with, and it's the perfect social experiment. Because I always say, when you take out the top chefs, everything else is food at the bottom. And to see where that artist forcing the record label to consider not banning TikTok, and that person has that level of power, I can see them saying, we gotta get Puff off the scoreboard. We've been keeping all his shit clean. Time to let the hounds out. Let's get the rollout going. Wait, so you think there's a connection between the music now, too. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm and, just giving an example. Diageo. No, I'm just, I'm just giving an example of oh, how no. a person's powerful enough. We, and we, we, can... we all the betas when it comes to this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so, so, ah, we out of yeah. here. What's your thoughts on radio? Do you think it's over for Hot 97? Nah. <laughs> I just think they need to revamp. That's all. They doing that. Oh, lot, yeah. You, you didn't a, hear? A lot of people got fired. A lot of motherfuckers got and you think that they need to revamp? So you think that they can challenge the money from Clear Channel now? Because things change. Hip hop, they had it because it was a hip hop station. Whoa. We had a lot of New York rappers. Hot, it was Central Love. MS? Yeah, MS. MS. Yeah. MS. But they own, but but they own by uh, what you call it? Uh, um, hedge fund. Hedge fund now. So I think ever since the he ever since that they came in, everything kind of Listen, been changed. Uh, I mean, radio is for people driving to work. They got five more years with that strategy, and then they're gonna have to like really change shit. I saw Money Long, and she spoke about radio. It's important. And she talked about the stream, and she said the money she's making from radio, from the relationship with radio, is far beyond any other dollar she's making anywhere else. How are we gonna let radio go when streaming no, is here, but motherfuckers are broke off streaming? Radio matters. Radio is paying that way because they have to compete with streaming. But they always paid that way. It was only five dollars a stream. I mean, five dollars a spend. But they had no leverage to change that the rate that they were giving the artists. They they would have done that had streaming not existed or iTunes not existed. They had to stay that way to stay relevant because they had to keep up with their advertisers and to keep music even being there. Because nobody at the label really gives a fuck about radio at all, to be quite honest. Unless you're moving a certain type of record, it matters for a certain type of record but not really in the world we live in.
I mean, what 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 song would matter to radio right now to you? It's so much doo doo garbage shit. I, I don't. I think like you see. I got. I got. I, I got a whole different thought. Nothing's gonna matter because all of it's trash. The only thing that hit the radio that I that I saw was I was I, I Spice in in Lotto. And do I love that Money Long is number one on Billboard? Do I love that? I even, like Money even, Long. Even outside yeah. of like rap shit, Teddy swims, losing control, was top ten in Billboard for weeks. Was all over radio. That was based off streaming. So mm. I think it's great that. Money's being paid out that way, but radio's gonna shift the same way everything else is. Give it some time. Five years, and you think the radio format is? Format is done. Radio will never be done. But the only, the only way radio is gonna be done to me is they raise the amount of money you can make off streaming. If you can make real money off of streaming, then radio's not gonna be needed. But uh, but if you want to make some money off of your singles, How many and you want to go money off radio though. If you write in a artists? record, if, if you write in a record, but that's that's who it's ten for. Artists, maybe. That's who it's for, and yeah. it's regional. Like it yeah, doesn't have ten, to be when twenty artists when, make when, money when, off when, radio. When, when, when we go to other regions, when we go right to Philly, Cosmic Kev don't play nothing. We play in New York. Totally different shit. They ratchet. They they don't play nothing. He's playing this shit. They're playing that shit. So there are different regions where people are getting yeah, but, the money. But, but from to radio. Rory's point, we I, I think every city. All plays at least the same six to eight artists. For sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. You they, don't think Drake is being played in Oklahoma like he's being played in South Carolina? Drake is right, not an SZA, anomaly. Then, all right, then take SZA. SZA's an anomaly. No, I said six to eight. So if we start going... Uh, Four no, ones not getting played. No, you're not hearing what I'm saying. There's at least six to eight artists. Like he said, only ten artists is making money off a of radio. If we take six to eight, they're across the whole country. I also put it this way. The way you're saying radio pays out more, who do you think is making more money? The person that is in radio rotation or the person that has 5 million monthly subscribers on Spotify? It's 5 million monthly subscribers. Like, who's that going to be, though? Is that a lot of people that got 5 when that, million? When that, person, when that huh? person tours, that person may not have a single radio record even close to what they would get that split. If you got 5 million know, monthly subscribers mother, and I'm, you could utilize that to live shows they don't, and merch, they don't you are fucking, laughing at somebody that has that radio split that you're talking They don't last. I'll take Money Long's career before I take one of those niggas. Put me on the radio and make me a household name. I'm taking Money Long shit. I'm Money not take, Long is different because Money I'm, Long is very talented. But, but I'm saying I'm taking. But she's a, a radio artist. Is what I'm saying. I'm she not just became. A radio I'm not artist. taking the streaming. I'm not taking the she streaming. Did Ten years where she wasn't. I'm not. She was a writer. I know she was. Yeah. A so she student. wasn't trying to be that. But, but the I'm real saying, question is, I'm not you, taking. I'm not she, taking the five million. And her and JD didn't make that record to be on radio. They did and the fucking. It happened and go. Yeah, but I know the inside of that. So it was gonna go. It started at radio. It made y'all think it didn't. Everybody that was doing the fucking whole thing, they were all at the radio stations. It was in Fair. the radio. I think radio So was it was important. already exposed. And then when we deal with Clear Channel, you only got to deal with two people, Doc and Thiefy. So no matter where you at across this fucking country, if you feel, if you deal with Doc and Thiefy, see, I know shit. When you're dealing with these motherfuckers, you can do the things I, that we're I'd, talking about. I'd rather, knows I'd rather deal <laughs> with <laughs> trying to figure out how to break through in an algorithm or with the DSPs mm -hmm. and try to deal with two fucking people at Clear Channel. Mm. All day. So you rather be a radio All artist or, or big time streaming artist? That's really what the, the I know. I know people are Brooklyn Steel in uh mm -hmm. in Williamsburg, mm -hmm. twenty five hundred cat venue. I have seen artists that have seven hundred thousand monthly listeners on Spotify sell that shit out in two hours, and I know people that are number one on the radio charts that couldn't sell out SOBs. That's true. I'll I, always take Brooklyn Steel. I mean, you selling merch, you make money off that shit. You sit on and get a radio split for what? I think it's y'all be talking about a whole lot of fucking work to me. That shit's a lot of fucking work that y'all talking no, about. Yeah, and people don't put and people <laughs> yeah. don't be putting that. This is but this is the other side of it. Like that's a lot of fucking work, and niggas don't have a staff. People don't have the people behind them. Too though, there be people sign that do good streaming. Like Earl Sweatshirt, I did the whole tour with him. Mm. He he. He's not on the radio at all. His fans are strictly there because of fucking... Earl, Earl makes more money than any and top 10 artist you could ever think of that's on radio. And he's signed. He's on a Warner. And they, they just come with the merch and do their thing.
So the label, he so talking about, talking about, talking about. So you think the label don't do nothing? You think he's just streaming naturally? They do, but all he For does Earl, no, I don't. It's fucking just so Nigga, the label does. I, we was just in Philly. Earl. These niggas never used to believe me neither. For a fucking freestyle, the DJ looked at. Hold on, you're missing my point, okay? Because Rory's saying, I don't think they put the money behind Earl Swear shirt. Yes, they are. And they pay, and they, listen. No, I listen. said I don't think they do anything. They're doing it. They're not, they're doing it. It's not radio. They're doing it. They're paying for Spotify. They're paying for Rap Caviar. All these platforms that everybody telling me you can't pay for it. And I know you can. No, you can pay for that. I just, they're not paying for Earl to be there. Not a bug in. I don't off, think Earl should be just on the <laughs> Yo, yo, you watch. But here's you the difference. Watch, you watch just off of Freestyle. I can't say the name. You watch the DJ tell the label nigga. Y'all gonna put money behind this shit, right? All right. No, no, but here's, here's my thing. And that's a fucking I'm freestyle not, I'm not, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Stop, stop. Damn. I'm not the one talking. The only two people that really knows what goes on in the label is y'all two. And I'm hearing two different opinions from two different age groups. You understand what I'm saying? So I, it's gonna be confusing to the people when you got one guy who did 10 years at a label, one guy who actively works at a label. Y'all both know what it is to put out a song. So I just think we're merging two thought processes together right now. And it changes drastically by the year of how but labels it, but, even work with you. But, but here's my thing. My shit ain't changed in 20 no, years. No. What <laughs> you're saying, you know, saying, I can't discount you. But also, working with him, I can't discount it. It's just too ideologies right now that's trying to figure it out at the same My time. Ideology. I think everything he's saying is important, but it's not the end all When I came in this business, I was a I was a promoter of parties and a DJ. It, it, well, then I became a then I became a manager. Mm -hmm. Then I got on and became a manager of producers and songwriters and I had a couple artists, Maya, Yummy, whatever, yeah. whatever, right? It wasn't until I was 15 years in this game and I was almost out that I had to learn about the marketing and promotion side of the game. And you know, this is how me and you started talking yeah. and started dealing with each other. I said, I would never, knowing what I know now, I would never be a rapper. Because now I know, I'm like, damn, shit ain't working because of this. Shit ain't working because of that. When I came home before Takashi 69 was big, you asked this man, I came home, I got a budget, okay? Takashi 69 was on Universal Republic. My budget came from Def Jam. And I said, how the fuck? I'm talking to him, don't worry about it. He's gonna be big. I came him, I said, yo, I just got a, I just got a promotional marketing budget from Def Jam for this Takashi 69 with this gummo shit. And I said, based upon the budget they gave me, he gonna be the biggest shit in the game. And he said, how do you know this? I said, cause they paying for it. That's why. No, I, I, I That's why Lil Wayne's the biggest, why Cash Money's the biggest, or oh, was? They was paid for. Drake? Paid for. Nikki, paid for. That's unfair. That's so well, why, hold on. why is it unfair? The hold truth on, is on, unfair. Let's slow, let's slow it down. Because there's been so many artists that have been paid for and they never broke. I, I'm not saying that they do. I'm not, I'm not saying that they do, but see, everybody's going to get paid for, Rory. Yo, see, I, this is what I was taught. Let me just say this. Everybody, you're going to make me shit on an artist I don't yo, want to shit on. Yo, shit They've on. been paying for Tanache for fucking a decade, and she's never broke. <laughs> she's not, so that just killed your whole point. Let him talk on that this. just killed your whole point. Like, it yo, didn't. Yo, on, yo, on, yo, I, 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 you can pay for anything, and Tanache, I do think is talented. I do think she has good music. I do think she's pretty. I do think she's talented. Sometimes shit doesn't work. To say that they just put money behind Drake, just put money behind Nicki, just put money behind 6 9 even though I don't fuck with him, there was a talent level there that you cannot put a money value on. We don't you, know they that put one so Takashi much record. fucking money about around artists that we've never Tekashi heard of. Takashi was talented, bro. We don't know no As Tekashi a marketer? Record. We yes. don't know Takashi's yes, yes, record. Yes. We don't know Takashi. We yo, talk about yo, 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 yo. And, 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 and this is what y'all don't understand is. He is the, a talented the, marketer. The game, the game is rigged. Everybody's not no, good. Everybody's not gonna make it's it. It's not as rigged right? as people think it is. We need tax write-offs. Everybody's not gonna make it. I'm gonna pay for Tanache. I really don't give a fuck. I need a write-off. This is oh, this is about money. This is a whole money play. This is not a creative how much, play. How much money did they keep burning into Rihanna before it worked? They burned two albums into Rihanna and the third one worked. So, they burnt money into her. Yeah. And that was a fact, nigga. We was watching it Rihanna was like, she's not going to make it. She's not going to make it. Wait, 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 then wait. they did another one. They burnt a bunch of money into Rita Ora too at the same exact fucking time with the same exact fucking strategy. 
Rihanna is Rihanna, and no disrespect to Rita Ora, Rita Ora is Rita Ora. Listen, you can't have two Rihannas. Let me let me, <laughs> let me bust this down to you, right? L.A. Reid signed Lady Gaga to Def Jam because he had Rihanna and didn't want her to come out. That was the whole strategy. Get her. We not letting her out, nigga, because she's going to fuck up the Rihanna wave. We ain't broke her yet. Give her money. Sit her ass right here and park her. If, if it wasn't for Vince saying, let me get her. Let me get off the label. I got a better situation. They sent her to, they, they sent her to the scope over there, which is still under Universal. It's the same company. And then we're going to let her come out. We used her as a tax write-off before. I guess my, my final, God, my my final point with this entire thing is, yeah. as two people that have worked at, la uh -huh. at labels, mm -hmm. I think you give labels way more fucking credit than they deserve. Okay. The fact that you think a label created Rihanna Bro. is out of my fucking mind. Let me mind. finish this. Like, this, is, this is great conversation. Bro. Did, did they put, did they, oh, oh, did they develop Rihanna? You got damn she right. Was just, she, was, she was some chick that Cypher Sounds found working at fucking Macy's from Barbados. I get that. But to say that Rihanna did not make fucking Rihanna, like there wasn't 15 fucking Rihannas at Universal at the exact time Rihanna was there. But L.A. Reid didn't want the other 15. Mind. He didn't want the other 15. I he hate wanted that that people one. devalue artists. He way. wanted that one. Hold on, nigga, like, nigga, 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 there was a million Rick Rosses. There was a million nigga, nigga, Rihannas. Nigga, this shit not, is crazy to me. It was not. The only difference is them not. as individuals. There Rihanna is Rihanna because Rihanna is Rihanna. Rihanna's Rihanna because that's the one they chose to invest in. Queens. Queens or Queens violence. That's why that's we out of here. Rory. Okay. <laughs> then make another one. <laughs> oh, it will be one soon. Trust me. Who? They're gonna find <laughs> it. Who? They're gonna do it. She's not here. You just, we, we he just said, at the beginning of we this conversation. Rihanna. No, at uh, the beginning of this conversation, he said music is suffering. Why is music suffering? Because they can't find anybody that's like the artist that was before. Because those artists are those artists. That's Did not they have true. money behind them? Of course. That's not of true. Of course. But to say labels just put money behind Dude, and press a button is so devalued to these artists. And they're fucking art, like, oh, God, I hate Queens when people do Queens this shit. Violence. He's I'm an artist. That, yo, he's an artist. That's why yo, he's you think You really think he's that people artist. walk into Def Jam like, hey, look how I look, and then push a button and they Rihanna? Yo, no, bro, Rihanna is bro, Rihanna. Let me say something. Let me say something to you. We got to close this Let out. Let me say this something to you. No, Neo's my man, right? Neo's my man. I put them with Stargate. Neo was not going to be Neo without the grooming of Def Jam. Without the people that they gave him, the people that they put him around and everything. You can give music all day. If you can't sell that shit to the world and people don't believe you, they not fucking with it. Separate point. Completely why, why, separate, point. separate point. That's what they did with Rihanna. Because you, so she Rihanna's just walked in. Rihanna's going to change 50 million times, my nigga. Who is when she got palmed the replay, everybody <laughs> thought she was going to be the shit. It didn't work. She put out the second album that nobody even fucking talks about. Why? You know what? You know what nigga said? We still going with Rihanna. We have to make it work. Jay-Z is the president here. This is this is bigger than what the people think. He has to be successful. All right. That's why Jay-Z asked was it. Wait, everything that Rihanna and Neo did, nigga was front row. Right here. <laughs> right here, front row, nigga. If they, they were so ill, he could have kept his ass home. Rihanna's gonna be Rihanna. No, nigga. Rory, we need Rory, that help. Rory, close this out. You know what I mean? All right, what happened to Tyler Cruz? Oh, Lord! <laughs> yo, yo, I was in the building. Why Rihanna was going to be Rihanna? Like, Why didn't they do that to Tyler Cruz? Like, subscribe, super thanks. What happened to Tyler Cruz? Yo, like, subscribe, super thanks. I was in the building. Thank yo, you, You're going to be a pop star with traction. Thank if you are not an artist, it does not work. Tyo Cruz, they, they, they had money before Def Jam. They, they had their own I was, shit. I was there. And, and they were he working. said he was I, there. Yo, listen. I was around too. Tyo Cruz, the production company, he they kept the working lights on. their money. You say they, they were? Yeah, they, but the they were working their own shit too. And then they came and put the money behind Tyo. That's what happened. So they just gave Ray to Rihanna, like, right? Hold on. It's too much. Hold on, hold on. Let him win the marketing and promo side. I, yo, when we off camera, I can't say it. When I say too much about this shit on camera, don't they come to me and tell me to shut up? But, don't they come to me and tell me to shut up? It's funny. In my own pod, I shit on labels and I, I just, I don't like this mentality. 
I think it takes away from the value of artists. I just think we have two dudes. I think we value an artist way too fucking I think we life. value labels. They right, 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 hold on, so. You throw them up on the wall now, nigga. They all on iTunes. Throw them on the wall. It's a new artist, nigga. Throw them on the wall. Motherfuckers is pining and being mailman doing fucking shit to be the rapping mailman now. And then they come out and they fucking rap. I'm tired of it. I say, yo, every nigga going rap. Every nigga's an artist. No, y'all rap. Y'all are not artists. Y'all just fucking you know, you rap. Know, you know what would hurt people's hearts? If you and Rory and Maul did a song. Oh my God. Niggas, <laughs> niggas would jump off the roof. I swear. And I, you know three of them. There's, there's one guy he would jump off the roof Man, right now. Like, yo, thank you. Like, subscribe. Super thanks for real. Thank you to Rory. Just in my shoes. I'm not even doing thank shit. Thank you to Rory for sitting down with us. Yo, Backfield Brigade. Sign up. It's only $5. It's the paywall. You get everything before time. Yeah, it's and damn get, near free. And you get exclusive footage as well. You get this before everybody else. Yo, ring that bell. Ring that bell so you know when we dropping this fire shit and we out of here. Peace.